is the 83rd edition of the grounded voices series aur sabko swagat hai ye hamara 83wa pehla hai kadam hai ye zameeni awazon ka aur janandrono ka rashtriya samanvay bharat mein kuch ekad aise manch hai jahan pe kai any bhashaon ke any kshetro ke mudde एक जगह पे चर्चाओं पे आए और ये अनोखा एक कदम है ग्राउंडेड वॉइस जमीनी आवाज जो बहुत ही बढ़िया दमदार चल रहा है और अभी पिचासी आने आया आ, हमने कुछ ही दिन पहले अपना अमृत महोत्सव मनाया भारत का जो स्वतंत्रता का तो हमें सौ के तरफ हम का कदम बढ़ा रहे हैं ग्राउंडेड वॉइसेस का तो बस ये इसलिए याद दिला रहा हूँ क्योंकि ये जो मुद्दे हम बात करते हैं सिर्फ गांव का ही नहीं देहात का ही नहीं बल्कि शहरों का भी कई ऐसे सारे मुद्दे होते हैं जो लोगों को लो, लोगों के जीवन में बहुत परिणामदायक होता है सो ग्राउंडेड वॉइसेस इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द रूरल स्पेसेस व्हेन वी से ग्राउंड इट्स नॉट जस्ट द रूरल द कंट्री साइड बट रैदर यू नो where people live and cities are very much where people live nowadays as well and uh, so grounded voices has been one of the few platforms where voices from various places have been able to interact and exchange and get to know each other's struggles and uh, as we celebrate our 75th uh, you know year of independence uh, we are approaching our 100 uh, grounded voice as well and it's uh, it's really great to see the kind of interactions we have and the kind of energies we all draw from uh, the grounded voice series so today's uh, you know uh, session is uh, we are going to hear from various uh, activists academics working on different aspects of water and living and especially flooding uh which actually if you see if you say water flood is a natural part of the you know water cycle and in in some sense we have disconnected ourselves from the natural cycle and we will be hearing more about the various aspects of this in today's session uh aaj ke ek is satra pe hum ye baaton pe zyada tar is vishay pe hum baat karenge aur sunenge ki pani aur jeevan का जो शहरी मुद्दे हैं उसमें भी बाढ़ का जो एक तनाव रहता है हर हर एक बस्ती का जो अपना जीवन के लिए शहरों में गए हैं साथी और समुदाय और उनके जो तनाव है उ, उसका जो अकेडमिक यानी वैज्ञानिक तौर से क्या होता है और एक एक्टिविस्ट के जीवन में कैसा रहता है और इसको कैसे झेल रहे हैं हम हमारे साथ ही तो इसके बारे में आज हम अलग अलग क्षेत्रों से अलग अलग राज्यों से हम सुनेंगे तो हमारे साथ आज कई वक्ताएं हैं और इन सब के साथ चर्चा चलाने के लिए हमारे साथ हमारे ही साथी एन के साथ ही प्रिया पिल्ले जी हैं प्रिया जी कई आप लोगों को शायद साथियों को परिचित भी होंगे बहुत सालों से 20 सालों से ज्यादा से इन विषयों पे मुद्दों पे काम कर रहे हैं पर्यावरण और हक के मुद्दों पे खासकर और ये इस इस स्तर का संचालन करेंगे और इनके जो अनुभव है वो एक तरह से जमीनों से भी और एक तरह से वो अपने जो अध्ययन में भी अभी ये ले जाके अभी पीएचडी कर रहे हैं तो बहुत ही दिलचस्प उनकी ही अनुभव है तो हम आशा करते हैं कि प्रिया जी आपके भी कुछ सोच विचार इस पे हमें सुनाए हम सुनेंगे भी और चर्चा में आप रखेंगे भी सो प्रिया इज गोइंग टू होस्ट द सेशन द डिस्कशन टुडे एंड दिस इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द एकेडमिक साइड और द साइंटिफिक साइड ऑफ flooding and the way we live but rather also about the practical and the uh, the the activist side of things on how we can tackle some of these issues because it's not just an academic exercise but it's a very much a living experience of the people especially the communities that a lot of us work with as part of NAPM and uh, 
Priya is one of those activists, uh, academics, and you know, multifaceted person who has been a part of NAPM for a very long time. And some of you might have actually interacted with her over the years. For more than 20 years, she has been working on issues of environment and rights. And uh, and actually, off late, she has been doing her uh, PhD on a related issue. And it's really great to have Priya uh, host this session. And uh, we really look forward to the discussion and also not just from the uh, speakers, but also from you, Priya. So, um, uh, and, and uh, like Priya was mentioning a little earlier, this uh, Grounded Voices series is online and a lot of friends uh, who are unable to catch up on this live do join in uh, when they get a few minutes uh, or you know, when they get better connectivity. So um, I would request that uh, folks not just uh, share this widely within their own uh, you know, friend circle, but also post it more publicly so that it reaches more and more people. Um, uh, sabhi, साथियों से अनुरोध करते हैं कि सिर्फ अपने दोस्तों में ही नहीं बल्कि सार्वजनिक तौर पे भी इसको सोशल मीडिया पे आप शेयर करें और लोगों के साथ साझा करें ताकि ये जो मुद्दे हैं इन सब चर्चाओं को हम और दूर तक पहुंचा सके तो आज के जमीनी आवाजें प्रिया प्लेय आपके संचालन में थैंक यू थैंक यू धन्यवाद द्विजी for those kind words uh, i am not a expert on flood related issues but uh, of course uh, uh, in sab muddon ko leke jo uh, sathi kaam kar rahe unse judav raha hai lambe samay tak aur uh, aise shaharon mein rehte hain hum jahan pe ye mudda ekdam aankhon dekha hamare sath ho raha hai uh, hamare sathiyon ke sath ho raha hai ye so of course uh, as as somebody who been working on environment has been uh, uh, following this issue बट uh, शुरू करने से पहले आई uh, थिंक uh, ये जो एटी थर्ड हमारा जो ग्राउंडेड uh, वॉइस uh, है आई वॉन्ट टू डेडिकेट दिस टू विमल भाई uh, जो हमारे साथी रहे हैं जो पर्यावरण को लेकर के बहुत लंबे समय तक जो आंदोलन में रहे हैं और शहरी मुद्दों पे खास करके उनका काम रहा है सो आई आई बी 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 रिसेंटली लॉस्ट विमल भाई हुज बीन Uh, a, a, a great sathi a great fighter a great comrade uh, working on environmental issues for the longest time uh, you know and uh, specifically on urban uh, issues he has been working uh, in 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 delhi in faridabad uh, uh, so yeah i think uh, uh, one uh, one keeps on his fight alive and and the fights he is peer headed alive and uh, uh, his voice and 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 uh, the issues that he stood up to uh, jiske liye jin muddon ko leke mal bhai hamare sath rahe hain aur lade hain wo muddon ko hum uh, hum hamari koshish ye rahegi ki uh, na sirf NAPM ki taraf se baki uh, aur aage badh ke aur bhi sathiyon ki taraf se log is muddon ko leke ke aage badhenge uh, to bas uh, unko yaad karte hue shuru karna chah rahi thi uh, uh, mal bhai ko uh, we've been talking about uh, now coming to the topic basically we have four uh, important speakers uh, but before i go into uh, introducing each one of them uh, actually uh, i'll uh, just briefly kind of try and touch upon the whole issue of of, of urban floods uh, uh, i've often seen ki matlab kis tarah se whenever we pick up the newspaper we all always see uh, that uh, Uh, या हम जिस शहर में रहते हैं वहां पे जब बाढ़ आती है तो वट वी सी इज दैट लाइफ कम्स टू स्टैंड स्टिल एंड एंड रेन्स आर नॉट सम ग्रेट थिंग्स दैट आर वेलकम फॉर सम पीपल इट्स इट्स फियर इट्स 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 हेल्थ इश्यूज इट्स इट्स अ मेस फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल एंड देयर लाइफ वेदर हम चेन्नई सब नॉर्थ चेन्नई सब की बात कर रहे हो या इवन इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो गांधी मार्केट Uh, in mumbai or whether we are talking about ernakulam down south or whether we are talking about uh, delhi uh, basically uh, minto road underpass so yes sub all these places uh, we we've seen uh, urban floods happening everywhere and uh, there are multiple uh, causes attributed to this basically um, uh, storm surges ki baat hoti hai there is uh, uh, it's attributed to heavy precipitation in 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 uh it uh, river overflow uh, you know climate change most importantly you know and and we know that climate change is going to intensify and increase ye sare jo jo flood ke situations hain isko climate change jo hai aggravate karega isko intensify karega ye hum jante hain 
और अभी मैं थोड़ा सा इसके बारे में पढ़ने की कोशिश कर रही थी तो लगातार 2000 से फ्रॉम द ईयर 2000 वी सीन दैट एवरी मोस्ट ऑफ द सिटीज वेदर इट्स हैदराबाद अहमदाबाद दिल्ली मुंबई सूरत कोलकाता जमशेदपुर गुवाहाटी तो चेन्नई सो वी सीन लाइक सिंस 2000 वी आर सीइंग दैट यू नो देयर आर फ्लड्स इन ऑल दीस दीस सिटीज मेजर सिटीज एंड 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 this these floods have left uh, led to kind of uh, loss of life property it's disrupted transport power uh, it's it's had uh, it's it's had a huge cost sometimes on lives of uh, people uh, and communities health definitely we've seen epidemics and um, things a surge in all of that so the health impacts are also seen and we've seen how uh, basically uh, the most marginalized who are the people who are actually affected by this uh is mostly people who live in urban slums uh and the people who live um, in the outskirts in 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 low lying areas of the city and who are the people who live there they are marginalized poor communities with very little resilience uh to to, to fight this issue and most of the time we have seen that uh, ye, this issue ye jo issue hai wo wo drainage systems ke problem planning se juda hua hai governance se juda hua hai uh, jo unplanned hum development kar rahe hain एनक्रोचमेंट जो पूरी तरह से हो रहा है नेचुरल ड्रेनेज कॉरिडोर्स का तो मतलब इट्स इट्स मल्टीपल थिंग्स अनरेगुलेटेड कंस्ट्रक्शन जो हैं नेचुरल टोपोग्राफी को चाहे वो शहर का हो या कहीं का भी हो हम उसको मानते नहीं हैं हम वेटलैंड्स को या रिवर बैंक्स को या फ्लड प्लेन्स को निरादर कर रहे हैं वी रियली डोंट प्रिजर्व एनी ऑफ दीज एंड दो वी हैव अ रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क देर आर ई आई रेगुलेशन फॉर अर्बन कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड All that is overlooked. हमेशा उसमें उसको कोई देखता ही नहीं है And हम देखते हैं कि पूरी builder lobby किस तरह से जो है जैसे ही cities की horizons बढ़ती जा रही है how as the cities are expanding, we are seeing how uh, you know constructions companies and lobbies, uh, real estate companies are taking over wetlands, flood plains and low lying areas in cities and पूरा जो लैंड यूज पैटर्न है उसका हाउ लैंड यूज पैटर्न इज टोटली बींग वायोलेटेड इन इन ऑल दीज प्लेसेस देर आर लॉट्स ऑफ एग्जाम्पल्स प्रोमिनेंट अमंग देम जो कम्स टू योर माइंड बींग इन डेली आई ऑलवेज सीन हाउ द एंटायर अक्षरधाम टेम्पल यू सीन इट बिल्ड यू नो इन द टू थाउजेंड राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ अर आईज इट वॉज बिल्ड ऑन द यमुना प्लेन द कॉमनवेल्थ विलेज हियर वॉज वॉज बिल्ड ऑन द यमुना प्लेन एंड and we have seen now that those flood plains those plains are being flooded every year when it rains no uh, we were seeing that very clearly similarly we have seen uh, janakarajan ji will be talking more in detail iske bare mein zyada baat karenge janakarajan professor janakarajan kis tarah se chennai international airport ka pura jo ek um, runway hai wo uh, adaya river pe build hua hai and uh, and ye jo 2015 ka floods hua chennai mein wo kaise matlab usse puri tarah se ye jo my, uh, matlab uh, अनमाइंडफुल जो जो डेवलपमेंट हम हम लोग देख रहे हैं अनप्लैंड जो हम ये कर रहे हैं इंक्रोचमेंट उस पर अगेन आप अगर आंध्र प्रदेश को देख ले तो हमने देखा है कि जो जो अभी जो अमरावती सिटी प्रोजेक्ट बन रहा है जो कैपिटल सिटी का प्रोजेक्ट बन रहा है अगेन दैट इज ऑल्सो कमिंग अप ऑन द कृष्णा रिवर फ्लड प्लेन कोचिन इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट की बात करें तो मधु सिटिंग हियर ही इज बीन वर्किंग वेरी क्लोजली उस उस चीज को लेकर के हमने देखा है कि हर बार जब केरला में बारिश होती है every time in rains in kerala one finds that uh, the cochin international airport is flooded because it's been built on wetlands and paddy land so ye jo pura jo jo the way we have approached environment and the way we have approached planning uh, and the way we have seen development and how it has impacted us kaha jata hai ki jo delhi ka jo drainage plan hai master plan this was made in uh, 1976 and we still continue to follow the same plan so basically uh, all of this i don't want to i think the experts will 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 really talk more in detail about these issues is pe jo hamare sath aaj experts jud rahe hain wo is pe baat karenge we have four experts today ek to husain indor wala hai jo mumbai se hai he will talk about his experience of mumbai uh, professor janakarajan is joining us from chennai similarly lubna is joining us uh, from hyderabad and madhu is joining us from um, uh, from kerala as well so uh, to uh, begin with i'd like to uh, begin uh, with uh, introducing hussein indurwala uh, hussein has been a teacher and an urban researcher in mumbai and uh, ye jo hain uh, kamla raheja uh, vidyanidhi institute of architecture mein uh, padhate hain and uh, his research focuses more on urban history on uh, infrastructure planning politics of land and housing as well as sustainable transport pe inka jo hai pura kaam raha hai 
एंड uh, जो कलेक्टिव और स्पेशल ऑल्टरनेटिव है इसके को फाउंडर रहे हैं और ये इनका जो पूरा रिसर्च uh, रहा है और उनका जो एक्शन रिसर्च और कम्युनिटी के साथ जो भी कलेक्टिव प्लानिंग रहा है वो इन इस तरह के अर्बन मुद्दों को लेकर के रहा है और uh, वो बा, अपनी बात रखेंगे आई लाइक टू इनवाइट यू टू टेक ओवर फ्रॉम हियर टू शेयर योर थॉट्स एंड योर एक्सपीरियंसिस विथ द मुंबई प्लस ओवर टू यू हुसैन थैंक यू प्रिया जी एक मैं अपना स्क्रीन शेयर करने की कोशिश करूंगा Okay. ये मेरे मेरा स्क्रीन दिख रहा है वी कैन सी इट या यस ओके ओके तो मैं इंग्लिश uh, में ज्यादा बात करूंगा तो थोड़ी बंबईया इंग्लिश बंबईया हिंदी में बीच बीच में बोलिएगा थोड़ा मिक्स करके बीच बीच में हिंदी मिक्स करके बोलूंगा मैं हिंदी कच्ची है तो माफी चाहता हूँ लेकिन जो इंट्रोडक्शन प्रिया जी ने दिया वो काफी अच्छा है मैं जो कहने वाला था यू आर म्यूटर हाँ तो प्रिया जी ने काफी सारी बात ऑलरेडी कह दी है तो मेरा काम थोड़ा आसान हो गया है तो मैं सिर्फ बॉम्बे का जो स्पेसिफिक केस है उसके बारे में थोड़ा बात करूंगा मेरा प्रेजेंटेशन जो आज है वो बेसिकली कुछ तीन या चार केस स्टडीज जो है बॉम्बे के उसके बारे में मैं बात करना चाहूंगा उसमें ऐसा है कि हम लोग काफी बार जैसे प्रिया जी ने कहा कि जो फ्लडिंग का जो इश्यू है वो प्लानिंग के साथ काफी क्लोजली टाइड है और इसका रीजन एकदम सिंपल है कि जब शहरों का सेटलमेंट होता है तो पानी किस तरह से जमीन पे फ्लो होता है और किस तरह से जमीन में अब्जॉर्ब होता है ये ये चीज करने के लिए प्लानिंग की जरूरत पड़ती है और बॉम्बे में बहुत प्लानिंग होती है आ, शायद बॉम्बे ऐसा शहर है इंडिया में जिसमें जो का, काफी हद तक प्लानिंग प्लान है लेकिन बॉम्बे में काफी सारे प्लानिंग डिजास्टर्स भी होते हैं तो ये जो प्लानिंग डिजास्टर का जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो लिटरेचर में यूज होता है उसका मतलब बेसिकली ये है कि जो चीज जो कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन हम लेते हैं डिस्पाइट uh, ऑपोजिशन के जहां पर जो प्रोजेक्ट्स वगैरह होते हैं जिसमें काफी ऑपोजिशन है उसके बावजूद वो प्रोजेक्ट किए जाते हैं और जिसके गोल्स बहुत ज्यादा नैरोली uh, डिफाइंड होते हैं जो uh, बहुत पार्शल नॉलेज से प्रोजेक्ट्स uh, किए जाते हैं uh, और जिनके काफी जो कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस है वो डिजास्टर्स uh, होते हैं उसे प्लानिंग डिजास्टर्स uh, हम एस उसको प्लानिंग डिजास्टर्स डिफाइन करते हैं तो बॉम्बे में जन जनसंख्या बहुत ज्यादा है और बी की भी संख्या ज्यादा है इसलिए बॉम्बे में जो होता है वो काफी सारा नेशनल स्केल पे प्रोजेक्ट होता है लेकिन जो इश्यूज बॉम्बे में है ऐसा नहीं है कि बॉम्बे के इश्यूज ज्यादा है और दूसरे शहरों के कम है एक्चुअली जैसे प्रिया जी कह रहे थे का, आ, ऑलमोस्ट सभी कोस्टल सिटीज में और नॉन कोस्टल सिटीज में भी फ्लडिंग के प्रॉब्लम्स बढ़ने लगे हैं और इसका लिंक ऑब्वियसली क्लाइमेट चेंज के साथ है जैसे रेनफॉल की इंटेंसिटी एवरी ईयर बढ़ती जा रही है और क्योंकि हमारी प्लानिंग सिस्टम वो हमारे ड्रेनेज सिस्टम की एक कैपेसिटी नहीं है पानी को ऑब्जॉर्ब करने की या फ्लश करने की इसकी वजह से फ्लडिंग प्रॉब्लम बढ़ रही है लेकिन ये क्यों हो रही है इसकी थोड़ी डिस्कशन हम कर सकते हैं तो बॉम्बे में जो पहला जो केस है वो अंबेडकर नगर का है जो मलाड में जो संजय गांधी नेशनल पार्क है उसको लग के एक बस्ती बस्ती थी बस्ती है और 2019 में ये जो राइट हैंड साइड पे आप जो हिल हिली एरिया देख रहे हैं वो बीएमसी का रेजर्वर का प्लॉट है और जो लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में है वो बस्ती है अम्बेडकर नगर और उसमें 2019 में मॉनसून में ये जो वॉल है वो रिजर्वर के आसपास इस तरह से बनाया था कि वो वॉल ने जो हिल का जो पानी हिल पे से जो उतरता है वो पूरी तरह से 
वॉल ब्लॉक कर देती है और जो कलवर्ड्स बनाए थे वो बीएमसी ने वो इत, इतनी बुरी तरह से बनाए थे कि कचरे की वजह से वो कलवर्ड्स ब्लॉक हो गए तो उसमें ऐसे हुआ कि दो जगह पे ये जो दीवार है वो गिर गई और उसमें काफी सारे घर बह गए काफी काफी सारा नुकसान हो गया और ये क्यों हुआ इसका हम लोग कुछ साथी मिलके एक फैक्ट फाइंडिंग टीम हम लोग ने सेटअप की थी उसमें वो फैक्ट फाइंडिंग रिपोर्ट ऑनलाइन भी मिलेगी एन के वेबसाइट पे है इनफैक्ट और वो फैक्ट फाइंडिंग रिपोर्ट में ऐसा पता चला कि ये जो दीवार बनाई थी वो ऐसी बनाई थी कि जो भी वाटर अपना जो लैंड का ड्रेनेज है वो बिल्कुल कंसिडर किए बगैर बनाई थी और ये दीवार का एक्चुअली कोई पर्पस था ही नहीं ये दीवार की जगह पे अगर सिर्फ एक फेंस बनाया होता तो भी काम हो जाता बीएमसी को ये डर है कि उनके प्लॉट का एनक्रोचमेंट हो जाएगा इसके लिए दीवार बनाई थी लेकिन वो दीवार भी इस तरह से बनाई थी कि वो वो सॉइल डिस्प्लेसमेंट की वजह से दीवार पूरी तरह से गिर गई दूसरा जो केस है वो है आरे का आरे का इशू काफी लाइव है और काफी सारा ऑपोजिशन है आरे में कारशेट जो बन रहा है उसके ऊपर तो हमने 2019 में ही एक स्टडी किया था आरे का जो फोकस था तब ज्यादा करके फॉरेस्ट और ट्रीज पे था तो हम 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 लोग ने एक स्टडी उसमें किया था जिसमें जो रिवर्स के कैचमेंट एरिया है उसके बेसिस पे ये स्टडी हुआ था और अगर आप ये मैप्स देखते हो तो uh, 1926 से लेके 2018 में जो लैंड कवर चेंज हुआ है आरे आरे के आसपास uh, वो ये मैप्स में दिखता है और इसका मतलब ये है ये मैप्स का कि जो uh, दो रिवर्स uh, के जो कैचमेंट्स है जो मिठी रिवर और रोशीवारा रिवर उसके जो ऊपर ऊपर के कैचमेंट के जो एरियाज है वो आरे में आते हैं और अगर आरे में ये इस तरह का कॉन्क्रिटाइजेशन या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स बनेंगे तो जो अभी जो पानी अब्जॉर्ब होता है आ, बारिश का पानी जो अब्जॉर्ब होता है वो पानी रन ऑफ हो जाएगा और जो डाउनस्ट्रीम एरियाज में फ्लडिंग का खतरा बढ़ जाएगा ये रिपोर्ट में आ, काफी सारा इसके बारे में डिस्कशन हुआ था और ये आर में ही 20-25 साल में किस तरह से लैंड यूज चेंज हुआ है अलग अलग सरकारी एजेंसियों को जमीन दी गई है अलग अलग यूजेस के लिए अभी कारशेड के अलावा जू और हाउसिंग वगैरह का भी प्लान बन रहे हैं तो इसकी वजह से इतना लोगों को ऑपोजिशन है क्योंकि उन लोगों को पता है कि एक बार कारशेड बनेगा तो उसमें बाकी सारे चीजों के लिए भी दरवाजा खुल जाएगा ये आर्य का जो आरे की जो इकोलॉजी है उसके फोटोग्राफ्स है इसमें जो स्ट्रीम्स है जो पेरेनियल स्ट्रीम्स है वो आरे से शुरू होते हैं और फिर वो मिठी रिवर बनते हैं प्रिया जी ने मेंशन किया था कि चेन्नई का जो रिवर है जो एयरपोर्ट है वो रिवर के ऊपर बनाया है बॉम्बे का भी जो एयरपोर्ट है सहार एयरपोर्ट वो एक्चुअली मिठी रिवर के ऊपर बनाया है और एक जगह पे आप देखोगे मिठी रिवर को अंडरग्राउंड उन्होंने चैनलाइज किया है वो एयरपोर्ट के रन के के लिए Uh, ये uh, 2005 में जो बॉम्बे में फ्लड्स हुए थे उसके फ्लडिंग के एरियाज है और ये सब मिठी रिवर के फ्लडिंग की वजह से uh, हुए थे uh, जैसे कि ये तो कॉमन नॉलेज है लेकिन मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंटली जो चीज ज्यादा फोकस में नहीं आती है वो ये है कि जो 2005 के फ्लड्स हुए थे उसका मेन फैक्टर था बैंडाकुल्ला कॉम्प्लेक्स क्योंकि बैंडाकुल्ला कॉम्प्लेक्स मिठी रिवर का जो स्प्रेड है उसके ऊपर बनाया गया है और वो जब बनाया गया था तब भी वो सीआरज का वायलेशन था उसके बावजूद बनाया गया था और जो 2015 में एक सुप्रीम कोर्ट की कमेटी ने बहुत करेक्टली कहा कि बैंडरकुरला कॉम्प्लेक्स एम एम आर मिठी रिवर का सबसे बड़ा एनक्रोचर है और जो जिस तरह से फोकस बस्तियों पे किया जाता है एनक्रोचमेंट के बारे में जब बात होती है उसका उस, उसका फोकस उन्होंने चेंज करके एक्चुअली पॉइंट आउट किया पहली बार कि बैंड्रा कुरला कॉम्प्लेक्स 
सबसे बड़ा एनक्रो एम एम आर डी ए मिठी रिवर का सबसे बड़ा एनक्रोचर है आ, तो आ, ये अभी आप देखोगे आर ए के अंदर ही ये ये जो स्क्रीन शॉट है ये 2009 में लिया गया था ये आर ए के स्ट्रीम्स है जो नेचुरल स्ट्रीम्स है जो उसके राइपेरियन जोन वगैरह दिख रहे हैं काफी सारे आ, आ, ये लो लाइंग एरियाज भी है जहां पर आ, बारिश के टाइम पे वो वेटलैंड का का फंक्शन जो प्ले करते हैं लेकिन उन्होंने आर के सब जो स्ट्रीम्स है वो चैनलाइज कर दिए है कॉन्क्रिटाइज कर दिए है आप ये देख सकते हैं इसमें जो दीवारें बनाई है आ, उसका पर्पस ये है कि जो टेक्निकल उसका जस्टिफिकेशन ऐसा है कि इस इसकी वजह से पंपिंग स्टेशन ज्यादा इफेक्टिव होते हैं पानी बाहर फ्लश करने में लेकिन इसका मेन पर्पस ये भी होता है कि जब ये दीवार बनती है तो उसके साथ लैंड भी बनता है और लैंड डेवलपमेंट के लिए बनता है तो ये जो वाटर स्ट्रीम्स का चैनलाइजेशन कॉन्क्रिटाइजेशन का जो मेन पर्पस है डेवलपेबल प्रॉपर्टी क्रिएट करना और इसमें जो जो सरफेस रन ऑफ जो पहले स्ट्रीम्स में जाने का पॉसिबिलिटी होता है वो ये चैनलाइजेशन की वजह से नहीं होता है तो ये बनने के बाद आरे और आरे के सराउंडिंग एरियाज में फ्लडिंग होना चालू हो गया जो जो नेक्स्ट प्रोजेक्ट जिसके बारे में बात करूंगा वो है मुंबई का कोस्टल रोड वो भी काफी कंट्रोवर्शियल प्रोजेक्ट है ये प्रोजेक्ट बनाने के लिए जो पूरा इंटरटाइडल एरिया का जो रॉकी सी बेड है उसको क्रश करके रिक्लेम किया गया है Uh, इसमें इसका काफी लोग ऐसे कहते हैं कि बॉम्बे पूरी तरह से रिक्लेम्ड है तो और एक रोड अगर रिक्लेम होगा तो उसमें क्या फर्क पड़ेगा लेकिन ये जो रोड जो बन रहा है वो ऐसे एरिया में बन रहा है जहां पर रिक्लेमेशन हिस्टोरिकली नहीं हुआ है और इसका जो इंटरटाइडल रॉकी शोर है वो एक नेचुरल फ्लड बैरियर है लेकिन uh, वो सब ये पूरी तरह से ये स्टडी किए बगैर हालांकि ई रिपोर्ट बना था और मिटिगेशन मेजर्स के बारे में भी बात हुई थी लेकिन अगर आप इसका जो सेक्शन देखोगे तो ये पूरा जो इंटरटाइटल जोन है उसके ऊपर ये रिक्लेमेशन होने वाला है और ये रिक्लेमेशन रिक्लेमेशन तो एक्चुअली 90 परसेंट ऑलमोस्ट हो गया है अभी रोड इसके ऊपर बनने वाला है और इसमें सबसे ज्यादा जो जो कम्युनिटी का नुकसान हुआ है वो है वर्ली का जो फिशिंग कम्युनिटी है उनका जो आर्टिजनल फिशर्स थे वहां के वो इंटरटाइडल एरियाज में जो फिशिंग करते थे वो पूरी तरह से लाइवलीहुड इसकी वजह से डिस्ट्रॉय हो गया है बीएमसी को 2018 तक ये पता भी नहीं था कि यहाँ पर इंटरटाइडल आर्टिजनल फिशिंग होता है ये जो सिटीजन ने जो रिपोर्ट किए थे जो पी फाइल करने के टाइम पे उसकी वजह से कोर्ट को पता चला के Uh, ये सब होता है जो स्टडीज में नहीं थे कोर्ट ने हाई कोर्ट ने फेवरेबल ऑर्डर भी दिया लेकिन बीएमसी तुरंत वो कंस्ट्रक्शन कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स के साथ सुप्रीम uh, कोर्ट चली गई सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने ऑर्डर स्टे कर दिया और प्रोजेक्ट बन ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीट अभी होने वाला है एक या दो साल में वो कह रहे हैं कि प्रोजेक्ट कंप्लीट हो जाएगा तो ये है uh, जो कोस्टल रोड का uh, रिक्लेमेशन uh, ये तो अभी पूरा पूरी तरह से भर दिया गया है ये काफी पुराना अभी ये फोटोग्राफ थोड़ा पुराना हो गया है तो ये ये केस स्टडीज बॉम्बे के हैं लेकिन इसका कंक्लूजन ऐसा है कि बॉम्बे में जो जिस तरह से प्लानिंग हो रही है जिसे हम प्लानिंग जिसे बीएमसी प्लानिंग कहती है वो दो Uh, उसके दो गोल्स है दो ऑब्जेक्टिव्स uh, है एक है कि जो नेचुरल एरियाज है शहर के वो कुछ नेचुरल एरियाज को प्रोटेक्ट कर दे लेकिन काफी सारे जो दूसरे नेचुरल एरियाज जैसे इंटरटाइटल जोन है आर एक का जो फॉरेस्टेड एरिया है उन सब को किस तरह से डेवलपेबल uh, लैंड बनाया जाए ये पहला ऑब्जेक्टिव है और दूसरा ऑब्जेक्टिव ऐसा है कि जो लैंड की जो वैल्यू है वो किस तरह से बढ़ाई जाए ताकि जो लैंड ओनर्स है और जो रियल एस्टेट इंडस्ट्री है उनका ज्यादा से ज्यादा फायदा हो आप ये जो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स बनते हैं बॉम्बे में मेट्रो हो या कोस्टल uh, रोड्स वगैरह हो उनका मतलब उ, उनका ऑब्जेक्टिव मेनली लैंड वैल्यूज इंक्रीज करना है 
और उससे फायदा रियल एस्टेट इंडस्ट्री को ही ज्यादा होता है और अगर हम प्रोग्रेसिव एनवायरमेंटल एक्शन की बात करें या एडवोकेसी की बात करें तो हमें दो चीज का दो चीज पे फोकस करना चाहिए वो एक ये है कि एनवायरमेंटल एडवोकेसी और इनइक्वालिटी ये दोनों चीज साथ में साइमल्टेनियसली हमें फोकस करना चाहिए क्योंकि बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि एनवायरमेंटल एडवोकेसी इनइक्वालिटी पे फोकस नहीं करते हैं सोशल इनइक्वालिटी पे और जब हम सोशल इनइक्वालिटी पे फोकस करते हैं तो एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज और डायमेंशन नहीं के बारे में बात नहीं करते हैं और उससे उसमें काफी सारा गैप भी हो जाता है दोनों इश्यूज का लेकिन हमें प्रोग्रेसिव एनवायरमेंटल एक्शन के के पर्सपेक्टिव से दोनों चीज पे साइमल्टेनियसली फोकस करना चाहिए और दूसरा कि कोई भी प्रोजेक्ट का एक कॉन्सेप्ट काफी यूज होता है जिसे प्रिकॉशनरी प्रिंसिपल कहते हैं उसका मतलब ये है कि कोई भी पॉलिसी या प्रोजेक्ट या प्लान जिसका जिसका क्लियर uh, एविडेंस नहीं है कि उस, उसके उसका एनवायरमेंटल हार्म नहीं होगा वो बिल्कुल uh, उस तरह के प्रोजेक्ट्स आगे uh, आगे बढ़ने देने नहीं चाहिए और उसका ऑपोजिशन होना चाहिए और कभी भी जब एनवायरमेंटल क्वेश्चन उठाए प्रोजेक्ट के एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट्स के ऊपर तो पहला तो जो बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ जो होता है वो प्रोजेक्ट प्रोपोनेंट्स पे होना चाहिए एनवायरमेंटल पे नहीं बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि एनवायरमेंटल को कहा जाता है कि आप दिखाओ कि इसके इम्पैक्ट्स क्या हो गए लेकिन एक्चुअली प्रोजेक्ट प्रोपोनेंट्स को दिखाना चाहिए कि ये प्रोजेक्ट्स के एनवायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट नहीं होने वाले तो ही ये प्रोजेक्ट आगे बढ़ना चाहिए ये दो प्रिंसिपल्स को साथ में लेके हमने एनवायरमेंटल और क्लाइमेट चेंज फ्लडिंग ये सब इश्यूज के ऊपर फोकस करना चाहिए ये मेरा ये मैं कह के मेरा प्रेजेंटेशन खत्म करूंगा थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच हुसैन भाई थैंक यू सो मच हुसैन एक्चुअली ये जो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट ही वॉज ट्राइंग टू स्ट्रेस वॉज बेसिकली वॉज शेयरिंग मल्टीपल यू नो केस स्टडीज फ्रॉम मुंबई एंड हाउ अनप्लान डेवलपमेंट एंड रेक्लमेशन ऑफ लैंड हैज लेड टू द सिचुएशन दैट दैट मुंबई फेस इज टूडे बेसिकली एंड ही वॉज the the one take away for me from this 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 uh, this presentation was the burden of proof uh, needs to be shifted uh, because currently the burden of proof is always on the uh, on the communities who are fighting uh, for environment or environmentalists or experts or think tanks that needs to shift to uh, the project proponents it's their duty and it it should become their job to ensure that they are not violating the environment that they are not doing something um that will uh, affect lives as well as the environment um, and rights of communities basically uh, so thank you so much husain for that uh, that um, that presentation we'll come back to you uh, i'm sure there are questions sawal bhi honge sathiyon ke i would just request everybody to hold their questions uh, we will come to the questions after all the four presentations basically um i would like to move on to professor janakarajan uh, abhi आगे बढ़ती हूँ प्रोफेसर जनकराजन को आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगी प्रोफेसर जनकराजन जो है आई आई विल ट्राई एंड टॉक इन बोथ लैंग्वेजेस प्रोफेसर जनकराजन यू कैन एंड आई विल ट्राई टू आल्सो ट्रांसलेट जस्ट ऑफ ऑफ योर प्रेजेंटेशन बेसिकली एट द एंड so uh, talking about uh, professor janakarajan he is been uh, he's he's been an expert who's been working on water for the longest time uh, i've always uh, you know um, uh, whenever i've i've ever interacted with anybody and ask them in tamil nadu uh, you know who do or who should i talk to or who should i who would who would know about water related issues uh, they've always pointed me to professor janakarajan uh, he is the expert on this issue um, he is basically the president of south asia consortium of interdisciplinary water resources studies and uh, he was also he is also basically a pro former professor of the madras institute of development studies basically he taught at uh, the uh, oxford university in uk uh, and uh, in terms of uh, his key research areas uh, basically he has done research on water both in urban as well as rural areas and he's worked on uh, water markets water con uh, conflicts transboundary water water disputes climate change adaptation vulnerability analysis water scarcity 
anything that is actually related to it, uh, to water, basically. Deltas, coastal wetlands, all of these issues is something that uh, that um, he's been working on. And, and uh, he's also uh, been a writer and, uh, uh, and, 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 and an expert on these issues, uh, delivered lots of lectures. I, I don't remember. I, I think I've been to many of his talks and been learning from him for a long time. So Professor Janakarajan, who is with us today, is the South Asia Consortium of Interdisciplinary Water Resources Studies ke former professor. Rahe और जो है उनका जो अहम वो ऑक्सफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी में भी पढ़ा चुके हैं और उनका जो पूरा ये है वो पानी को लेके उनका काफी काम रहा है पानी में जो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स आते हैं जो इंटरस्टेट ट्रांसबाउंड्री वाटर डिस्प्यूट्स रहे हैं जो अलग-अलग राज्यों के बीच में उसके ऊपर क्लाइमेट चेंज और वाटर को लेके भी उनका काफी एडैप्टेशन वल्नरेबिलिटी एनालिसिस जो वेटलैंड्स है uh, I would like to now uh, hand over to Professor Janakarajan uh, to uh, basically give us uh, an idea about uh, you know floods and Chennai. Uh, Chennai has been hit by floods multiple times and you've been in the middle of it, uh, talking about it, advocating for it and standing up and speaking. So uh, over to you, Professor Janakarajan. Thanks a lot, uh, Priya, and for uh, such an in generous introduction. And I salute uh, NAPM and the NAP, NAPM organizers for really hosting so many, I, I believe it is 85 plus, uh, you know, uh, programs and webinars you organize is really wonderful. I'm, I'm delighted to really know that. As, but I also participated in one, one of the events in the, uh, in six, six, seven months ago. Now, <clears throat> uh, without really wasting much time, I don't want to really uh, uh, show the screen because it's going to really Eat up my time. Priya has given me only 12 minutes at the most. So let me quickly go into the issue. So I instead of uh, going into the uh, cases of uh, where flood has occurred, why occurred, and so on, I would like to touch upon one or two very important conceptual issues, which are important and which are applicable to all the cities, not just in India, but in the entire South Asia. Now, the, I, I'm, so my discussion is going to really center around what is called demystifying urban floods. Urban floods is now really glorified. It's exacerbated to, to the extent that it doesn't deserve. So the demystifying urban flood is extremely important. And also, I would like to touch upon the issue of, is there a tendency to hide behind climate change for the kind of a flood that, urban flood that you are you know, encountering? So this is something, this is going to be the central, the central theme of my presentation. Basically, before really going into the issue, you know, shouldn't we really understand what a flood is all about, that we are talking about? How do we define a flood? So the common man's perception is, if you come across, say, a water stagnation in your street, it is a flood. And if that is a water stagnation in my home, within my compound wall, it is a flood. But is it a flood? It is not. You really have to really look at what the flood is all about. It's 1800s and so on, historically. No, so, so the flood is actually a flow concept. It is not a static concept. So flood, flood is actually something, you know, which overflows over and above the river and the flood plains of the river. And then if then it spreads to other parts and inundate, then, then it becomes, then you can call it a flood. Otherwise, you can't really call a flood that, that, that uh, you know, the, I mean, the stagnation that takes place in your street or in some area where you have, uh, in a low-lying area where you have constructed your house or office or whatever. So, so, so this is something which we really have to understand. And secondly, this floods actually, you know, uh, is something which occurs when it exceeds the uh, carrying capacity of the rivers and streams. Okay, let's suppose what uh, understand what is the carrying capacity of a river or the stream. 100 years ago, in an urban river, there was a carrying capacity. Let's suppose it carried something like 80,000 cusacs of water. Okay. Now, uh, after 100 years, the, the urban river still exists. Its carrying capacity is reduced to 20,000 cusacs. So, will you call it a flood? You cannot because, you know, its original carrying capacity was 80,000 cusacs. It is now reduced extremely badly because of the encroachment. 
and therefore the river overflows. Will you call it a flood? I won't call it a flood because you have encroached upon the uh, rivers and the flood plains. So this is something which we really have to understand and demystify, and then you know, uh, uh, and 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 then only you can really you know make a, a proper intervention. Without that, you know, we will not be able to do to make any kind of intervention. And thirdly, for in cities like Chennai and also in Mumbai and in Cochin uh, and in Calcutta to a great extent, the floods can also occur because of the rivers flow water from the sea. The water need not flow into the sea from the streams and rivers, where the uh, seawater can also, you know, uh, flow in, in a reverse manner into the uh, into in, into the uh, uh, land la land surface. So that can also happen. That's called a coastal flooding. So that can that can also be called a flood. So all these have got lots to do with the human blunders and anthropogenic activities. With all your uh, you know um, the so-called uh, urban market oriented activities so the greater greater the interventions human interventions in these uh, areas more severe is going to be what you call the flood this is something which we really have to understand and acknowledge before really going into the subject and secondly it is important for us to understand what is the context in which you are talking about the urban flood now this is applicable for all cities in the country no you really have to acknowledge that the economic activities are busting. We are talking about the growth rate, what is called the competitive growth rate, growth and development. You want to make the economy, convert, I mean, take the economy to a $5 trillion economy, meaning what? More economic activity, meaning more encroachments and, um, and um, more reduction in the urban space. So that is that is going to really happen. So um, more, uh, more the kind of activities that, is the, the, that takes place in the urban area, more severe is going to be the urban flood. And secondly, the demographic pressure. And there is decreasing urban space. And most importantly, the per capita drainage space is diminishing rapidly. If the, you, 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 you take, for instance, the flood that occurred in Chennai in 1905, 1918, and uh, 1985, the, uh, the, the fury of the flood was not that much, and the damage done to the done due to flood was not that much. Today, because of the uh, 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 overflowing economic activity and because of uh, the busting population demographic pressure, uh, the, the drainage space has come down drastically. So therefore, there is no space for the water to you know to drain out. So that really also causes a flood. What you call the flood, otherwise it, it is basically an inundation. And uh, and uh, then uh, and then there is a lot of uh, migration. What is called the distress-induced migration from rural to urban area contributing to growth of slums and, uh, and, and increasing environmental risk, ecological imbalances, traffic congestion, mobility constraints, all kinds of things are happening. And most importantly, complete neglect of urban streams, urban rivers, urban water bodies, and marshlands, floodplains, beaches, everything is uncared uh, uh, or it is uh, encroached. And all these will contribute to flood, whether it is Chennai or Mumbai or Cochin or Hyderabad or Calcutta. These are the general characteristics, general issues, concerns that we encounter in the context of all major cities, bigger cities in the country. Now, let's come specific to Chennai. As far as Chennai is concerned, I would like to put an emphasis on, without really understanding the fundamentals of Chennai, you cannot really understand the flood, you cannot demystify the flood, you cannot really make any kind of interventions to reduce uh, or, or work towards the flood mitigation. Now, Chennai is a coastal city. That's the most important fundamental. What does it mean? It means the topography is fine, gravity is very, very gentle, and the slope is extremely gentle, and there is flow of water from the west to east, and most importantly, the activity, developmental activity can take place only in on one side, the other side it is sea. Keep that in mind. And secondly, you know, the drainage space, the, the density of drainage, the density of drainage you really have to calculate. How this has changed over a period of time. And Chennai, the density of drainage is huge. And thirdly, the understand the watersheds. Have you understand your watersheds? There are given watersheds historically. You have to look at the 1971 topographic sheet. It's a, such a beautiful watershed Chennai has had. And uh, you have you understood the, the, that watershed? Have you understood the hydrogeography? Have you understood the map, the elevation, the topography? Have you maintained the given slope and gravity. This is something very important. Whatever be your type of developmental activity, 
whatever be the type of interventions that you want to really contribute or make uh, in the city, you should make it a point to maintain the given gravity and slope. If you really distort that, you are going to suffer from the flood. The Chennai is the classic case where the given gravity and the slope and the watersheds and the and the beaches and the wetlands have been completely encroached and distorted, and therefore we suffer from the flood. And then you complain about the flood and the, and the severity of the flood. And then you have to really give respect to your ecological hotspots. You have not done it. So unless you really understand and respect these ecosystems, unless you really understand and map and uh, you know uh, uh, you know take care of uh, these ecological hotspots. No point in talking about the flood, no point in complaining about the flood. These are completely distorted in the context of Chennai. Now, look at the rainfall pattern. There are three things I would like to emphasize in the case of, uh, again, in the case of any city. You really have to understand the rainfall pattern of the city and its neighborhood historically. And secondly, you really have to map the upstream and downstream watersheds and its ecosystems. And thirdly, and you really have to understand the fundamentals. Of, uh, of any city, more so Chennai, and, big, and and then you have to map the drainage system. Actually speaking, Chennai city should not suffer from any flood. We suffered from a flood in 2005, which I have been following, 1985, 1997, 2005, 2015, uh, and 2021. And once in four years, five years, six years, you get this periodic rainfall. Actually, if you really follow this rainfall, if you really understand it, the actual total rainfall that occurred in this month is, has not really varied much. It varies from 1,050 to 1,300 millimeters of rainfall. That's all. But the severity of the flood over a period of time has increased. Why? This is something which we really have to understand and analyze. And, and, and this is the context in which also I, I, I would suggest that it is extremely important for us to you know, understand what is the kind of a watershed what is the kind of a drainage system that Chennai city has got? Chennai city has got one of the best drainage system in South Asia, to the best of my knowledge. I have not seen this kind of a drainage system anywhere in South, South Asia, but Chennai city is a city which suffers worst in terms of the urban flood. I tell you what, Chennai city has got the urban rivers beautifully geographically distributed. On the northern side, you got a river called Aranyar, Kosastaliar and Nandiyar. These are the these are the three rivers flowing on the northern side and uh, carries a huge amount of rainfall during the monsoon months. Joins the Bay of Bengal and it enters the Ennur Creek, the wetland, and then uh, there is another uh, wetland called uh, Pulikat Lake. Joins them and then joins the sea. It's a beautiful ecosystem. And then on the center part of the Chennai, you got a river called Kuom, a very very famous Kuom, very very. Beautiful river. It used to be such a beautiful river. And on the southern side, you've got a river called Adayar. Okay. Already we have seen some three, four rivers. And the further south, you've got a river called uh, Palar. Okay. And with so much of uh, you know drainage system, why Chennai should uh, suffer? Besides these uh, four or five rivers, Chennai city has got 16 macro drains. Some of the macro drains are still uh, like an urban river. It still exists. Uh, uh, but, but then encroach with the, so much of uh, so many urban rivers and so many macro drains why should cities suffer water should flow, should flow into the uh, bay of bengal as it happened before today it is not happening that is because of a lot, a lot of encroachments and that, that is because of uh, uh, you know the uh, encroachment of the flood plains and that is also because of uh, you know the uh, undulated uh, the terrain of the river in fact priya in her presentation talked about, uh, mentioned about uh, the way the Chennai uh, airport terminal got flooded in 2015. Yes, it got flooded. You know why? Because one Adia River on which the runways are constructed, uh, the airport runways are constructed, should, didn't have a yeah, uh, 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 so slope, proper slope. The river should have a slope from head to tail, isn't it? But that slope did not exist like this. River goes up, then comes down, goes up and comes down because of uh, uh, dumping of the building debris and the garbage and all kinds of things. So the river has got lo uh, has lost its topography and, and also the lost its flood plain and completely encroached. In fact, in some places there are walls constructed on both sides of the river. River has been converted into a canal. So the, when there is a huge flow of water from the upstream, 
it overflows it it completely got uh, you know uh, you know uh, flooded the runways are flooded in 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 the chennai airport not only that and many parts of the city got flooded in 2015 and the total loss was 20000 crores 20000 crores so the huge uh, uh, damage occurred to the lives and the, uh, the livelihoods and property and many small micro micro uh, industry owners so there is no small micro industries uh, industry owners committed suicide because they, they couldn't even open their industry got flooded completely many small shop owners uh, committed suicide Th these things did not come uh, in, in in the news so and uh, but then uh, something like 750 people lost their lives but it's actually much more this was 2015 but understand in 2021 also flood occurred but then 2021 the same amount of rainfall are even slightly uh, slightly more but then the damage was much worse that is because by, by, by between the between 2015 and to the 2021 more encroachments have taken place and more buildings have come up and naturally inundations have taken place so more is the the the, the, the as you go by uh, historically from now to 1905 onwards up to 2021 with the last flood which we which we witnessed the characteristics of the flood has been changing from the one of flow to the static so the inundation have taken place see i tell you an example I give you an example chennai city has got this much of rainfall and so many rivers and streams but then the upstream of the chennai city in the adjoining two three districts there are 3600 to 4000 water bodies areas lakes and we call them areas and these are called lay I men water bodies uh, and the tanks and the, these tanks or lakes are in a very bad shape and with so much of rainfall water is not collected in these water bodies and still it flows out so if you really maintain these lakes if you really deepen and restore the water body capacity of the, uh, these water bodies water will not flow down and the, uh, the fear of the flood can be tremendously reduced you don't want to really look into that but then you are resorting to paying the flood relief and if there is a drought you are resorting to paying the drought relief this is a political intervention so it is very important that you know you have to really look at and uh, um, uh, you know in, in a sort of integrated fashion uh, both the drought and flood if you take care of the flood you will take care of the, uh, the drought if you take care of the drought you will also take care of the flood this is the most needed intervention for chennai city which we should do but most uh, you know depressing thing is that whenever there is a flood and uh, when there is a big rainfall when the, when the water doesn't flow in when, whenever it gets stagnated there is a tendency for the uh, for, for the bureaucrats as well as for the politicians to say that this is because of the climate change i would say this is hiding behind climate change all this occurred because of the human blunders all this because of the encroachments how can you call it a flood because there is a natural a natural drainage system rivers and streams and the uh, and the macro drains so encroach and spoiled and it's all clogged therefore the the war flow takes place and the inundation takes place how can you call it a flood how can you call it uh, this, this, this is because of the uh, uh, climate change so that is what i would call the i the the, the 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 hiding behind the climate change the both the bureaucracy as well as the uh, the politicians have the tendency to hide behind climate change in order to you know a uh, 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 cover up their own blunders in in handling the issue of floods now what do we do now if this is a situation what can you do this is this is happening in all cities all cities they, they, they have the tendency to you know uh, they to hide behind climate change so in order to really address the the so called urban flood you know it is important for, for us to understand the fundamentals of each city you have to understand the fundamentals of uh, the, uh, the 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 gravity topography and, and slope and so on you need to really document and uh, you know map the hydrogeography and most importantly you really have to you know uh, make make sure that your urban rivers and urban water bodies are properly maintained so that the floods can you know um, the water can flow easily if you don't allow it naturally water is going to stagnate then you will complain about the flood so that and, and and another thing is that you know the urbanites particularly the, uh, the middle and upper middle they won't have a clean surface they put cement everywhere they put cement everywhere therefore the water doesn't percolate so they it is called uh, you know impervious surface this kind of a increasing impervious surface in the urban areas also contributes to flood elsewhere so you will have your area clean but then the water is going to get stagnated elsewhere 
So these are all the human blunders. Why should we, why should we really you know, resort to you know, uh, uh, hiding behind climate change? So unless we address all these issues, urban flood is going to become more severe in the days to come. Thanks, Priya. I'm going to stop here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Janakarajan, for that very, very interesting insight into the Chennai floods uh, and uh, pointing uh, to the problem, the exact problems, actually. Uh, uh, I will quickly try and uh, rephrase your... It's a little difficult because my Hindi is also not very good to talk about some of the technical terms that you've been using. Uh, but I'll try and quickly talk. I will try and quickly talk in Hindi. माफ कीजिएगा मेरा भी हिंदी उतना अच्छा नहीं है कि मैं प्रोफेसर जनकराजन के जो ने जो बात रखी उसको अच्छे से रख पाऊं क्योंकि बहुत सारे टेक्निकल टर्म्स भी थे लेकिन उन्होंने अपनी जो बात शुरू की थी वो इस चीज से कही थी कि भाई वो जो चेन्नई के फ्लड्स हैं उसका उपयोग करना चाहते हैं एज एन एग्जांपल क्लाइमेट चेंज जलवायु परिवर्तन जो है उसको उसके पीछे जो हम छुप रहे हैं फ्लड्स को लेके उनका ये मानना है कि ये जो पूरी प्रक्रिया है शहरी फ्लड्स का ये पूरी तरह से जुड़ा हुआ है हमारे हम इंसानों का जो 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 हम लोग जिस तरह से पॉलिसीज बनाते हैं जिस तरह से कानून बनाते हैं जिस तरह से इंटरवेंशंस करते हैं जिस तरह से डेवलपमेंट को देखते हैं जिस ये पूरी चीजों से जुड़ा हुआ है एक्चुअली और जिस तरह से हमने पर्यावरण को इवन शहर के पर्यावरण को जिस तरह से हमने बर्बाद किया है इसका ये रिजल्ट है वो बोल रहे थे कि हम हमें फ्लड्स का उन्होंने थोड़ा सा डेफिनेशन भी बताया कि किस तरह बाढ़ का मतलब पानी का ठहराव नहीं होता है बहुत बार हम देखते हैं कि पानी कहीं पे स्टैगनेट कर रहा है और जो कॉमन मैन जो आम लोग हैं उनको लगता है कि यही यही फ्लड्स हैं लेकिन ये जरूरी नहीं है कि वो फ्लड्स है वो मिसमैनेजमेंट है एक्चुअली पूरे शहर के प्लानिंग का पूरे शहर के जो ड्रेनेज सिस्टम्स हैं तो और उन्होंने जब बात रखी थी तो उन्होंने कहा था कि ये पूरा इसलिए भी हो रहा है क्योंकि हम हम अगर देखें कि शहरों में ही हम लोग जो हैं सबसे ज्यादा इंटेंस इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी जो हम विकास की बात करते हैं जब हम तो वो शहर ही हैं जो उसको फायर करते हैं या उसको आगे बढ़ाते हैं हमको ग्रोथ रेट चाहिए हमको इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट चाहिए और इस तरह का जो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट है वो शहरों में ज्यादा होता है और वहां पे फ्लड्स क्यों आ रहे हैं ये हमको सोचना जब हम उसकी बात करेंगे तो हमको लार्जर जो जो विकास है उसकी उसकी उसके बारे में भी सोचना ही पड़ेगा वो कह रहे हैं कि जो ड्रेनेज स्पेस है वो वो लगातार कम होता जा रहा है और ऐसा नहीं है कि फ्लड्स पहले नहीं थे वो कह रहे थे कि चेन्नई की अगर एग्जाम्पल ले ले तो उन्नीस में उन्नीस में भी जो है अर्बन बाढ़ आए थे चेन्नई में लेकिन ऐसा नहीं था वो इतना बड़ा नहीं था जितना 2015 का फ्लड था वो क्यों हो रहा है उसके वो लोग कुछ कारण वो बता रहे थे कि पूरी तरह से जो अर्बन अगर सिटी को अगर देखना है चेन्नई को समझना पड़ेगा वो कह रहे हैं वो कह रहे हैं कि चेन्नई एक कोस्टल सिटी है और इस सिटी में जो जहाँ जो विकास है वो एक 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 तरह से होना चाहिए उसकी एक 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 एक, एक उसका उसके लिए एक तरीका है वो कहते हैं कि एक तरफ चेन्नई सिटी का जो पूरा है वो पूरी हमारी कोस्ट लाइन है और वे ऑफ बंगाल है उधर और ये जो पूरी सिटी है इसको अगर हम पुराने उन्नीस के जो टोपोग्राफिक शीट्स निकाल के देखेंगे तो उसमें बहुत सारे जो है वाटर शेड्स हैं उसमें लेकिन आज के डेट में वो सारे वाटर शेड्स जो हैं मतलब पूरी तरह से बर्बाद है वो कह रहे हैं कि हम जो विकास करते हैं अपने शहरों की क्या वो क्या वो वहाँ की एनवायरनमेंट वहाँ की टोपोग्राफी वहाँ की जो लैंड यूज पैटर्न है उससे उससे जुड़ा हुआ है कि नहीं है ये हमको पूछना पड़ेगा अपने आप को और वो बोल रहे हैं कि जैसे चेन्नई जैसा जो एक एक कोस्टल सिटी है इसमें ये एक इकोलॉजिकल हॉटस्पॉट भी है आ, इसको हम बर्बाद कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद फिर हम ये बोल रहे हैं कि बाढ़ आ रही है और बाढ़ का हम कुछ नहीं कर सकते हैं ये क्लाइमेट चेंज की वजह से आ रही है दैट इज नॉट द आंसर उसका वो कोई आ, सीधी बात नहीं है वो कह रहे हैं कि पूरी अपस्ट्रीम में आ, और नदी का जो ऊपर का तट है और नीचे का तट है मतलब दोनों जगह पे जो है आ, 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 वो पूरी तरह से जो ड्रेनेज सिस्टम है नेचुरल एक ड्रेनेज सिस्टम है वो कह रहे थे कि 
ये एक नेचुरल सिस्टम बहुत सालों से रहा है चेन्नई शहर में ही कुल पांच से ज्यादा जो है रिवर्स हैं नदी हैं उसके अलावा वो कह रहे हैं कि बहुत सारे लेक्स हैं पानी के अन्य स्रोत हैं बहुत सारे वहाँ पे वो बोल रहे थे एनोर क्रीक है वहाँ पे पुलिकटली ये जो है वेटलैंड है बहुत सारा तो ये सारी जो है ये ऐसा तो नहीं है कि ये सब नहीं है ये सब नेचुरल ड्रेनेज सिस्टम्स हैं चेन्नई के और ये सारे जो है कहीं ना कहीं लोगों ने अपने इंटरवेंशन से जिस जैसे जैसे शहर बड़ा हुआ जैसे जैसे शहर में कंस्ट्रक्शन हुआ जैसे जैसे एनक्रोचमेंट हुआ लोगों ने किया या सरकारों ने किया अर्बन बॉडीज ने किया तो वो सारी चीजों ने जो नेचुरल जो जो फ्लो थी जो नेचुरल ड्रेनेज था उसको कहीं ना कहीं ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट किया है और वही वजह है कि ये जो 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 बाढ़ है चेन्नई में वो आया है वो कह रहे थे कि दो बीस हजार करोड़ के करीब जो है लॉस ऑफ लाइवलीहुड मतलब आजीविकाओं का लॉस हुआ है जान माल का नुकसान हुआ है 2000 के 15 के फ्लड्स में और उन्होंने कहा कि बहुत लोगों ने साढ़े सात सौ लोगों की मृत्यु हुई ऐसी खबरें निकली हैं लेकिन बहुत वो एक्चुअल जो दर है वो बहुत ज्यादा है क्योंकि इसके बाद जो छोटे छोटे दुकानदार थे जिनके दुकान थे बहुत सारे ऐसे केसेस सामने आए जब वहां पे लोगों ने सुइसाइड किया जिन्होंने आत्महत्या किया क्योंकि उनकी आजीविका छिन चुकी थी उनसे तो ये जो ये जो चीज है वो कह रहे थे कि जो तीन हजार से ज्यादा वाटर बॉडीज हैं इसको प्रिजर्व करने की इसको बचाने की जरूरत है और एक इंटीग्रेटेड एक अप्रोच की जरूरत है एक होलिस्टिक अप्रोच की जरूरत है ना केवल बाढ़ के लिए लेकिन सूखे के लिए भी हम कभी बोलते हैं कि भाई सूखा है तो प्रॉब्लम है बाढ़ है तो प्रॉब्लम है लेकिन ये दोनों को जोड़ के देखना पड़ेगा अगर हम जो है पानी को बचाएंगे और ड्रेनेज को अच्छे तरह से होने देंगे तो ना केवल हम बाढ़ जो है उसको अवॉइड कर पाएंगे लेकिन ये जो जितने भी वाटर बॉडीज है लेक से वो वाटर ग्राउंड वाटर रिचार्ज भी करेगी तो कहीं ना कहीं ड्रॉट को भी वो ये करेगी तो वो वापस से घूम के आ रहे हैं और अपनी बात जब उन्होंने खत्म की उन्होंने ये कहा कि हम लोगों को सिर्फ क्लाइमेट चेंज के जलवायु परिवर्तन के पीछे छुपना नहीं चाहिए कहीं ना कहीं हमको देखना चाहिए कि हम अपना जो विकास जिस तरह से हमारी विकास की परिभाषा है या हमारी सोच है विकास को लेकर के हम जैसे सोचते हैं कि हमारा शहर अगर आगे बढ़ेगा बड़े बड़ा होगा तो वो कैसे होगा तो इस, इस ये सोच जो है चाहे वो ब्यूरोक्रेटिसी है चाहे वो पॉलिटिशियंस हैं सबकी जो है वो पूरी ग्रोथ ओरिएंटेड इकोनॉमिक जो सोच है वो उसको बदलना पड़ेगा कहीं ना कहीं और नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम्स को जो 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 हैं वो जो हर सिटी को हर सिटी का होता ही है वहाँ का टोपोग्राफी वहाँ का हाइड्रो हाइड्रो जोग्राफी जो है उसको समझ के उसके हिसाब से जो है उस सिटी को प्लान करना पड़ेगा डिजाइन करना पड़ेगा या हिंड्रेंसेस दूर करने पड़ेंगे तभी इस तरह की जो आपदाएं हैं इससे हम बच पाएंगे अभी कुछ कुछ सवाल भी आ रहे हैं अशोक श्रीमाली जी पूछ रहे थे तो क्योंकि मुझे लगता है जनकराजन जी निकल जाएंगे तो बस जनकराजन की जी के जो दो तीन सवाल हैं वो हम खत, मतलब पूछते हुए निकलेंगे क्योंकि वो साढ़े सात बजे निकल रहे हैं प्रोफेसर जनकराजन सिंस यू लीविंग एट सेवन थर्टी देर आर अ कपल ऑफ क्वेश्चन आंसर बिकॉज बिफोर आई गो टू नेक्स्ट स्पीकर सो अशोक श्रीमाली जी इज आस्किंग वॉट अबाउट साइक्लोन टू दे कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू फ्लड्स दी अदर राजगोपाल हैज ऑल्सो पुट इन क्वेश्चन ही इज आस्किंग इज क्लाइमेट चेंज नॉट contributing to flooding excessive rainfall in a few days due to climate change uh, of course there are bland man uh, man made blunders but do you uh, can we totally rule out climate change that's that's another question uh, basically uh, i think those are the two questions that quickly i saw in the thing so if you could quickly address them and if we could uh, move on to the next speaker after yeah, that yeah sure 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 okay the first question is about uh, the uh, cyclones whether cyclones contribute to flooding you know cyclones is basically you know it is uh, you know heavy wind and uh, which really you know it results in uh, uh, you know tree falling and uh, you know uh, uh, the slums will be very badly affected and it need not really come with a heavy rainfall of course it comes with a heavy rainfall uh, but it need not okay so therefore you know the, you know, <coughs> the cyclones as such is not uh, big driving force for flood but what happens is that you know the flood trigger flood is become a, a, as an issue is triggered only when there is a 
heavy rainfall in a few hours. That's what I said when when I said uh, the carrying capacity of the river exceeds the rainfall, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the decreases less than the rainfall, then naturally the flood occurs. So very often, since these urban rivers and streams are narrowed, uh, the carrying capacity is reduced. So therefore, the rainfall, even if it is uh, less than what it used to be, naturally it, it causes flood. That, that is one of the main problems. So I'm, I, again, for the second question, I'm not ruling out the possibility that climate change will not occur. It is happening. Uh, I'm not saying that climate change is a myth. I'm not saying that climate change is something, uh, a fiction. It is definitely, you know, uh, happening and we are all going to really, you know, suffer more due to the, uh, the, the, the climate change threat. But the point that I'm trying to make is keep yourself clean. I mean, make sure that these are uh, the uh, urban ecosystems uh, and also the given uh, fundamentals of the city, any city is kept clean. Without doing that, don't complain about the climate change. That's what I'm saying. Please restore the river. Can you, can you restore all your urban drainage system? Without doing that, don't complain about the climate change. That is all I'm trying to make. So, the, the, uh, I'm, and also I'm trying to say that there is a tendency. There is a tendency to hide behind climate change, which is, which, which is not correct. Don't hide behind climate change. First of all, you, you keep, keep, I mean, do everything that you, sh you should do. Uh, upstream watershed should be clean. Make sure that the water, it's called a sustainable urban, urban drainage system. Make sure that the water that falls in the upstream is stored there. So, so therefore, the, the, uh, the, and, and as a result, the water doesn't flow to the downstream. And uh, secondly, uh, clean up all your rest uh, rivers, restore all your rivers, and uh, make sure the gravity is maintained and all the urban ecosystems are maintained, and most importantly, the wetlands. We have lost all the wetlands in Chennai. Pallikarne Marsh, which is supposed to be uh, the 50 square kilometers uh, area once, today it is reduced to only five square kilometers, can you imagine? We are eaten away. There are roads, there are IT parks, everything in the marshland, and so also in, in Ennur Creek area. So uh, we, are, we are eating away all your ecolo our ecological hotspots. Naturally, the flood is going to happen. That is when I said, do, having done all these damages, don't hide behind climate change. Uh, one more question. Uh, this is the last question I'm just going to uh, share with you. Uh, K.S. Gopal wants to understand, uh, basically, are there no answers in civil engineering? Uh, like, you know, uh, slow down water flow, for example. Um, so, so are there any engineering uh, answers you see to this problem? Is what definitely, definitely. You see, it, it doesn't, as I, to me, frankly, Priya, I don't look at it as a engineering. I, I look at it as a you know common commonsensical you know you know a problem. No, as I said before, if there is a heavy see there, there is a huge link between upstream downstream watersheds. If there is a heavy rainfall, Chennai as a as Chennai city is linked to the adjoining districts and the adjoining watersheds and the uh, and and uh, and the uh, the uh, uh, river basins. Make sure that the water falls in the upstream is stored there. And you can ask me where will you store? I'm saying I'm saying there are for 4,000 water bodies, uh, and you can easily store up to 100 teams of water in these water bodies if you clean up and if you desilt them and if you deepen them, deepen them. But we have not done it, and uh, and naturally water that falls in the upstream is flowing to the to, to the downstream, and that downstream has to pass through the Chennai city, and so you call it a flood. I don't agree. I will not agree to this at all. So if you call it an engineering solution, do it, call it. But then I would call it, it's a natural solution. It's a common man's uh, uh, solution. So there are water bodies, store water, so that water doesn't flow to the downstream. Why can't we do that? And, I, and, I, and I'm also saying that restore all your rivers, restore the gravity. These are simple things. It, you don't need a big civil engineer for the engineer for this is I don't call it a big civil engineering solution. They're very simple, commonsensical solutions. Yeah, exactly. So, just like Janak Professor Janak Rajan, Bata rahe hain ki matlab ye sawal tha ki bhai engineering se is isme koi hal nikal sakta hai kya wo 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 bol rahe the ki ye sab natural hal hain jo jo sadiyon se jo hai. 
लोग इस पे जो है कर रहे हैं लोग कम्युनिटीज कर रहे हैं जो एग्जिस्टिंग वाटर बॉडीज हैं उसकी उसका इस्तेमाल करना आ, मतलब इंजीनियरिंग नहीं वो उनको उसको बोल रहे हैं वो बोल रहे हैं कि ये होता आ रहा है और कहीं ना कहीं हमने वो जो हमारी नॉलेज थी जो नेचुरल नॉलेज सिस्टम्स थी उस पर हमने फॉल बैक करना बंद कर दिया है और उन्होंने ये भी अपने आप को क्लियर किया कि वो नहीं बोल रहे हैं कि जलवायु परिवर्तन इज नॉट एन इशू वो ही इज नॉट सेंग क्लाइमेट चेंज इज नॉट एन इशू पर वो ये बोल रहे हैं कि इस पूरी कंडीशन को एग्रेवेट कर रहा है कहीं ना कहीं हमारी जो बैड प्लानिंग है जो हमारी जो बैड इंटरवेंशन हैं ये वाली बट नाउ आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन टू इट स्मिता आई सो योर क्वेश्चन बट आई विल आई आई वुड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू कि आप उसको वी वी कीप इट फॉर द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर बिकॉज वी हैव टू मोर स्पीकर्स टू गो ऑफकोर्स यू नो योर क्वेश्चन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट वील आई टेक इट अप यू नो आफ्टर द अदर टू स्पीकर्स आई एड लाइक टू आगे बढ़ते हैं हम चर्चा को लेकर के थैंक यू प्रोफेसर जनक राजन आई विल मूव ऑन टू डॉक्टर लुबना सारवत लुबना जो है शी इज अ सोशल एनवायरमेंटल एक्टिविस्ट फ्रॉम हैदराबाद एंड शी इज डन अ पी एच डी इन इकनॉमिक्स एंड वो इस्लामिक इकनॉमिक्स में जो है उनकी स्पेशलाइजेशन है इंडोनेशिया से एंड उनकी खासियत यह है कि वो फर्स्ट ऐसी महिला है शी इज द फर्स्ट वुमन इन इंडिया टू ऑप्टेन अ पी एच डी इन इस्लामिक इकनॉमिक्स शी इज ऐसी उनकी बहुत ये बहुत बड़ी सराहनीय बात है कि उन्होंने पी एच डी करी है इस्लामिक इकनॉमिक्स में और पहली भारत की महिला है जिन्होंने ये किया है वो जो है स्टेट प्रेसिडेंट हैं डब्ल्यू आई सी सी आई वाटर रिसोर्स काउंसिल तेलंगाना की और वो जो है काफ़ी उनका काम रहा है शी हेज़ फाइल्ड पटिशन्स हाई कोर्ट में नेशनल ग्रीन ट्राइब्यूनल में ट्राइब्यूनल में ह्यूमन राइट्स कमीशन में इस सब में वाटर बॉडीज़ के प्रिजर्वेशन को लेकर के बेसिकली uh, उन्होंने काफ़ी काम किया है और जो है उनको जो है इस चीज़ के लिए जो है डेकन क्रॉनिकल न्यूज़पेपर ने मेयर ऑफ ग्रेट हैदराबाद म्यूनसिपल कॉर्पोरेशन चॉइस का अवार्ड भी उनको उनको दिया था तो आई वुड जस्ट मूव ऑन एंड रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर लुबना सारवत टू बेसिकली टेक ऑन फ्रॉम हियर एंड शेयर योर एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अर्बन फ्लड्स इन हैदराबाद थैंक यू थैंक्स uh yeah please and uh, before i start sharing can you can you hold your speaker a little up yeah yeah can you just yeah is it okay now yeah it's okay so uh, before i start uh, sharing my screen before i start sharing my screen Okay, I want to clarify that. Sorry, Lubna, your voice is breaking. You just take out that headphone and just mute yours. I record the headphone. Yeah, is it? It's okay now. It's okay. It's on and off. Okay, now. Yes. I hope it's. Do you want to re remove your headphone and try? No, uh, I mean. Sorry. I hope it's okay now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I hope it's okay. No, it's it's breaking. Mm, it's fluctuating. The, yeah. It's, can you check the connection between your laptop and your headphone? No, it is just. Microphones. Uh, okay. Will it work? You can. If can you join from your phone and see? I'm just trying from another one. Is it okay? Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. please go ahead please go ahead so uh become chronic had conducted one survey in india uh yeah uh, leaders need 
splash in the paper. Otherwise, okay. Maybe I'll join after the next speaker. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Madhu, can I can I actually uh, ask you to then come in uh, and and uh, give your presentation? So, we, until Lubna, who is in our microphones, can take it. Can take it. We will listen to Madhu's story. डॉक्टर सीजी मधु सुदन जो हैं वो रिसर्चर हैं और हाइड्रोल हाइड्रो क्लाइमेटोलॉजिस्ट हैं वो कोची से हैं केरला से और इनका जो पूरा रिसर्च जो है उनका जो पूरा शोध है वो फोकस है मतलब नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस और इंटरलिंकेजेस ऑफ ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशंस और क्लाइमेट चेंज के जो इंटरलिंकेजेस ह� उन्होंने अपनी पीएचडी जो है वाटर रिसोर्सेस इंजीनियरिंग में किया है मतलब डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग आईआईटी मुंबई से किया हुआ है और ये जो है जो केरला में 2018 में जो बहुत भयानक बाढ़ आई उस उसके जो है वो प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर रहे हैं जो है कॉसेस एंड रिस्क मिटिगेशन स्ट्रेटजी और अभी भी जो है वो जो है ग्रासरूट सेवर पे जो पार्टिसिपेटरी टेक्नोलॉजी है उसकी इंप्लीमेंटेशन को लेकर के काफी उनका काम रहा है और ये फ्लड रिस्क रिडक्शन प्लान जो कोचिंग इन एयरपोर्ट की बात हम कह पहले कह रहे थे कि वहाँ पे जो है हर बार बाढ़ आती है वहाँ वहाँ के लिए जो एक फ्लड रिस्क रिडक्शन प्लान को मतलब प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं इन्होंने काफी सारे जो है पीयर रिव्यू जर्नल्स और आर्टिकल्स में और किताबें भी इन्होंने जो है लिखी हैं और जो ग्लोबल इंडस टेक्नो बेटर्स अवार्ड है 2006 की मतलब एक्सेलेंस इन रिसर्च अवार्ड जो है आईआईटी मुंबई का 2018 म uh, 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 for uh, I'm not translating this. This will be posted in in the chat in English for all of you to read. I don't want to waste more time. I would I would request Madhu to take over from here. Thank you, Priya. I will just uh, share my slides and start uh, with this presentation. So, yeah. Professor Janakrashan, I'll, I'll start with Professor Janakrashan comment on uh, uh, the the impact of human interventions and climate change. So, this this is a very huge. A debate uh, between uh, the even, even whatever happens in a, in a particular locale, whether this this is particularly due to the climate change impacts or due to you know, local human interventions. So always this this debates comes out, and um, somehow uh, I felt that this is a combination of all these factors which cumulatively link to this this impact. So we have to understand and segregate uh, the causes of a particular event or impact or of a particular event. And then we have to attribute uh, the, the causes and its contribution uh, to, to climate change and also to the um, uh, human interventions in that local uh, landscape. So there are um, uh, the, when when you think about uh, the human local hu human interventions because climate change is also a a, 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 a factor which is actually uh, induced by human um, uh, human use of various kinds of resources. So, but that actually uh, impacts the global climate and the global climate circulation, the atmospheric circulations, the sea sea currents uh, in a larger scale. Uh, where uh, that will also impact your local climate in, in a way. But uh, when we think about uh, the, the global climate change and human intervention in the local space, uh, this has huge impacts because some of the impacts may be uh, compounded by human interventions and some of the impacts may be uh, masked by human interventions. So these, there, are, there are issues where even the impact of climate change can be masked uh, by human intervention. So suppose uh, we have, uh, created a good uh, drainage system and, and suppose we have planned properly so that we can um, uh, accommodate some of the impacts of climate change. So, so there's a positive aspect of human interventions in climate change, but the problem here is whatever we do, whatever we, we continue to do in India and, and especially in the, in the urban uh, locale, we can call it urban locale, it is not uh, in, a, in a planned uh, or scientific manner. 
uh, verb, even when you look at your drainage um, details, drainage uh, data, your drainage uh, streams, your drainage canals and other things, you know, you can, cannot find a detailed design diagram of your drainage, uh, drainage uh, map of your area, basically. So if you have your streams, your canals, your other networks and all those things, you may have it, that the line diagram of that may be there, even, even that may be depicted in a map or something like that. But when you look at the scientific details of that maps, so whether you have cross-section details of all these sections, whether you have the slope of the drainage, drainage uh, uh, network, but that those basic uh, things which are, which are important when you think about finding out the carrying capacity of your drainage channels and your uh, uh, flood uh, uh, mitigation uh, aspects of uh, your, your drainage capacity of your drainage network, that basic link is missing. And most of our drainage networks are not designed based on these technical aspects. So th there's a huge, huge lacuna in this regard in, in, in the engineering uh, uh, feat uh, where we are uh, finding more difficulty where our departments, uh, inline departments like the water resource department, maybe our uh, public works department, and even the uh, corporations and municipalities where uh, they don't have a technical backing to look at these things and, and do whatever necessary to, to reduce the floods in the, in the, in the, in the uh, urban, urban scene. So, so with that, I will start uh, my presentation. Uh, introduction. Uh, I think uh, hope uh, this is visible. Hope this is visible. Yes. Yes, it's fine. So, uh, when you think about floods uh, from the point of view of Kerala, you know that uh, this flood, the great deluge that has happened in 1341. That was the greatest, greatest uh, destruction that has happened in Kerala, which actually uh, created lots of sand uh, sandbanks and new islands in the coastal Kerala and created the so-called Kochi. So it's it's a, it's a it's a creation out, out from destruction. So when you look at look at Kochi as, as such, when you, you can say that it's a, uh, a product of destruction. So, and during that process, you know that this, the uh, age old Musiris port, that was the major attraction, the whole Malabar coast for the last 2000 years, maybe uh, 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 that, that may be um, uh, uh, a major trade center for the whole of the Europe and even to the Arabia, uh, uh, that is lost and devastated and, and uh, that port is lost. And uh, this, this actually start, uh, the, the, the river actually, flowed in different directions and 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 it and made its way to the um, coast through different way called Kochi Ari, where 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 the name name came from the Kochu Ari. That means a small um, uh, estuary that is created as part of this deluge and uh, through which now the uh, one 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 branch of Periyar um, uh, flows into or joins the Arabian Sea. And uh, later, uh, with the uh, uh, and, and after uh, the uh, 1341 deluge, uh, comes uh, the Great Flood of 1924. That was also uh, a flood which is in in magnitude much high much higher rainfall than uh, 2018. But when you look at the impacts, uh, the 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 uh, loss of life, the loss of uh, uh, properties and things were much much smaller because of the. Uh, the, the various kinds of um, interventions that humans or developments that humans have carried out after 1924. So, so there, was, uh, there was a huge uh, gap between the 1924 flood and 2018 floods where uh, there's a loss of memory where these floods actually impacted and what are the, uh, uh, the, the flood inundation areas when, when there's, the, there's a possibility of flood and all those things are a major problem. So again, uh, when you look up, look out, look at uh, the possibility of flood uh, in a future scenario. Uh, and even after 1924, there were lots of dams in the river basins and they were all holding waters uh, um, waters in the dams. So people felt that you no, know, the, the, the dams can uh, uh, take, take uh, store water mm -hmm. and it can reduce floods. But in 2018, the scenario was a little bit different uh, where when you look at uh, the severity map, this, this, this uh, hotspot where you can see uh, the extreme condition, the red spot. Uh, that is the uh, uh, the downstream of Periyar, uh, 
uh, and uh, Chalapudi basins, the two rivers, uh, the two major rivers of Kerala, Central Kerala, and which is in the uh, uh, nearby uh, Cochin um, uh, city. But you, when you look at uh, the, the flood uh, severity index map of uh, Kerala, you know that it is not the cities that has been uh, highly affected or severely affected. This is the villages that is bordered by these rivers were highly affected, impacted by floods of 2018 or even before the 1924 flood. So when you think about floods, when you want to mitigate the impact of floods, it is not the urban areas where the urban areas are may not be the most affected places of floods uh, when you think about uh, mitigation strategies and all. But uh, the, the, the locations where, uh, or the maybe even villages, which is uh, uh, bordered by these rivers, are uh, impacted uh, uh, much higher than the cities, which are may maybe far away and not connected directly within these uh, larger watersheds, uh, watersheds and rivers. So this has to be uh, in our mind uh, uh, when we think about uh, urban floods and all those things uh, that it may not be the urban space that may be impacted highly if there is a flood. So uh, with this, I will start when you look at uh, the modifications that has happened. Uh, in the history historical time period in Kerala, we have to link it with uh, the the climate of those 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 times. When uh, you know that because of the increase in uh, temperature uh, regimes, sea surface temperature regimes in the Arabian Sea, uh, the land thermal the land sea contrast thermal contrast was low, and this actually resulted in a lower lowering of uh, the the uh, uh, the lowering of rainfall in the uh, Kerala coast. And this actually again resulted in a lower flood uh, impacts in the last 30 years, which resulted in uh, what you can call it as a trigger to encroach into more into the wetlands and places uh, uh, where they felt that the threat is not that much in, in, in case of flood is coming, or maybe the, the, the dams can be uh, take, take the risks of floods. In, time, in, in, in such situations. So when you look at again, uh, uh, even, even though the rainfall, uh, 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 the average rainfall is reduced over the period of the last 30 or 40 years, but when you look at the extreme uh, rainfall events, uh, the, the events, uh, the extreme rainfall, uh, the events are increasing and, and that is uh, impacting our uh, uh, hydrological processes and even the uh, flood uh, pattern in various, uh, uh, various rural basins. So this is, this is a huge impact when you look at why this, uh, even though you have a low rainfall, you, are, you, are, you have experienced higher extreme events in the, in the coastal areas. So this is uh, particularly important when you look at the coastal uh, cities like Mumbai, um, Chennai, or even Kerala, this, this 7,500 kilometer long stretch of Indian coast will be impacted by such kind of uh, effects basically because these are uh, uh, in line with the coast and, and the impact will be much higher than the interior places. Mm, uh, maybe the, the interior places may have, or may have an issue with uh, the drainage and other things, but the coastal, coastal areas uh, are, are directly impacted, not only through, through, due to the increase, increase in extreme rainfall events, but also due to uh, the increase in sea level rise. So when you look at the sea level rise, which actually obstructs the drainage of the cities uh, in the coastal areas. Kochi is a classic example of that. So even if you don't uh, have a huge rainfall, your places will, even, uh, even if there is no rainfall in, 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 in days of uh, December, uh, where, where you have a high tide or something, your cities, uh, your, your most part of the city will be flooded. Like in Kochi, when you look at the last year's uh, uh, database uh, during December, uh, much of the areas in, in Ernakulam district, Ernakulam, uh, the Kochi city area, even including the railway station and, and some parts of West Stand uh, was inundated due to tidal floods because sea water is intruding into the land, the low lying lands, and those areas being in, uh, inundated by seawater. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we think that it's not a big issue because the, the the inundation may not be more than how, uh, um, more than one uh, feet or there may be 30 centimeter. But the issue here is uh, the, the uh, fresh water and the issue between the fresh, fresh water and salt water. So salt water has huge impact on uh, the deterioration of structures and other uh, other infrastructures. So, so this has a huge implications for future uh, safety and other aspects related to the infrastructure. So this has not been taken into account while we um, be trying to say, see, see uh, a generalism service again, 
was uh, 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 trying to tell you that when uh, we clean up our rivers, maybe increase the capacity, all these has uh, several implications when you implement because uh, you, if you if you increase the carrying capacity, how will you increase the carrying capacity? You can increase your breadth of the river or width of the river, and again you can dig it more so that uh, more water can uh, carry through that uh, particular drainage channel. But what will happen if you dig more? Where your sea level is rising, it's in a coastal city. So suppose you dig more, there's a chance that more salt water can en enter into your uh, city and it can inundate more areas. So this is a very delicate issue. If you don't have drainage, network maps, your, your slopes, your, uh, your actual uh, uh, height above sea level of, uh, of their bed, um, channel beds, you cannot even um, think about something to, to creatively uh, means, uh, mitigate the floods in the, in the city, in the, especially the coastal cities. So when you look at, again, the 2018 fl floods, you can see that uh, the when you look at the whole uh, whole uh, India uh, India when you consider the whole uh, all, of, all over India, it was actually a, a normal or below normal rainfall year in 2018. But most of the areas in uh, uh, in, in India effect, uh, impacted by heavy rainfall events, extreme rainfall events, and lots of people lost their lives across India in various places. Even there are uh, districts where the the uh, average rainfall was below average. Um, the rainfall was below average. It was impacted by floods, and people are lost. Uh, uh, loss. There is a huge loss of life and property in the whole of the country. So this has to be uh, in in our mind. Even if you have a low rainfall uh, uh, year, you can have extreme events and flooding. The possibility that you cannot rule out, and the impact of uh, human interventions. When you look at the human interventions, you. When you look at a city, you, you, we may always um, forget about the, the role of dams, uh, which, which actually uh, impact the inundation in cities and all. So when you look at the 2015 uh, floods in Chennai, it's a classic example of dam management, the reservoir management, how they, they operate and manage dams has significantly impacted uh, the downstream uh, flows and inundated uh, most of the areas. And at the same time, when you look at uh, the, uh, the tidal behavior, the tidal flow behavior, uh, even when you release water, uh, even, a, even in a normal, uh, normal, uh, normal day, if your high tide is uh, higher, uh, uh, then there's a possibility of blockage of water uh, uh, drainage to the uh, sea, and that may uh, severely impact your, uh, uh, impact your inundation. And it has uh, long uh, standing water uh, st uh, standing uh, time, and it will impact uh, more areas in the uh, coastal area, coastal uh, uh, coastal regions. So this is a classic uh, case when you look at uh, the uh, Chalakudi and Periyar or basin, where uh, the, the the dams in 2018, the dams has contributed more uh, more because uh, even before the rains, dams are full, and they don't have any storage space to hold more water. And uh, the extreme rainfall coincided with the, uh, the spillage or maybe the release of water from dams contributed a severe, contributed significant impact on the downstream areas. And this has uh, affected uh, uh, mainly in the downstream uh, uh, area, which I have showed you earlier, uh, uh, the villages which is bordered by this river. The, this river basic, basically the confluence of Periyar and Chalakudi was the most affected uh, villages uh, uh, in the 2018 floods. And when you look at uh, the uh, resource, uh, resource use in this river basin for the last uh, 40 years, these are the river water levels in, in the three rivers of uh, Kerala, where the red indicates Chalakudi River and the, uh, and the uh, green indicates the Periyar River. You know that uh, the, because of the, uh, the sand mining, a continuous sand mining for the last 40, 40 50 years, the river beds have gone down actually gone down, the river water level has gone down, even the river bed has gone down below, uh, below sea level. And this, has impact, this is impacting really the water um, movement from the river to the sea, where uh, uh, that, that again, that is actually a, uh, a contract, uh, contradicting the management in the downstream regulators and all. So if there is no, uh, no rainfall, you have to shut down your regulator in the downstream to stop saline water in ingress into the river, river where these, these issues is popping up in a very uh, uh, significant way that even uh, 40, 50 kilometer upstream of your river, your riverbed level is below three to four meter below sea level. 
so there's a huge possibility that if you don't have a control mechanism in the uh, in the uh, mouth of the river uh, uh, the sea water may intrude into the whole of the uh, uh, upstream river and it can destroy all of your crops your your drinking water schemes and whole of water security of the whole of cochin city even the cochin city is been directly taking water from these rivers so this has a huge implications not only for uh, for the flooding aspect but also for the water security aspect so we have to look at it in a, in a, in a multiple uh, multiple uh, causative factors and e how each factor is impacting uh, the, the the or uh, aggravating the flood situation or maybe drought as janagrasa rightly said these are two sides of the same uh, coin uh, the floods and droughts uh, if you lose your water you will end up in drought if and and what is actually losing your water means it's a, in a in a shorter time means it's a flood so floods and droughts are uh, the the uh, the same uh, different sides of the same coin and when you look at uh, the the constructions um, uh, uh, in the periyar or basin the, the one of the water regulate water regulators in the downstream area this is purapulli purapulli regulator in the downstream of periyar you can see a a, a controlled room in the uh, right uh, right hand side of the corner which is actually in the upstream side of the river which is actually down of uh, your regulators um, um, what do you call it your your shutters so when there is a flood comes out your control room will be inundated first so that you cannot even uh, regulate your regula uh, your shutters and this may even end up in a massive flooding so these issues has to be looked at looked at in a in a very uh, engineering and scientific manner that most of our construction uh, activities now are not happening as per the the need, as per the need of the hour and not as per the, the capacity of the engineering fraternity that we have in our country is is, is very poor that it cannot even understand these these uh, anticipate this kind of eventualities uh, that is happening uh, uh, that is aggravating the floods in various parts of the country and when you uh, uh, look at the wetland uh, uh, destruction and um, loss of wetlands in kerala uh, kerala has lost huge amount of wetlands uh, it, it lost almost um, uh, uh, seven to uh, two lakh hectare hectare land uh, nine lakh hectare it was a huge reduction from nine lakh to uh, two lakh hectares that means about seven lakh hectare land is lost in uh, in between these uh, uh, 40 50 years and that has really reduced the water holding capacity and uh, increased the uh, chances of flooding and and aggravating the uh, uh, flood flood areas and and uh, increasing the flood areas in the uh, in in various parts of the parts of uh, kerala so this is also true for uh, the cities true uh, because cities are uh, uh, moving in a very faster rates uh, the the uh, encroachments are uh, much faster the development on a much, much faster phase uh, all the uh, bus stands or maybe the uh, railway station maybe airports all are built on wetlands uh, even the hospitals and other things so so it's a huge crisis that when there is a flood uh, you have to you are all uh, prime um, services will be blocked uh, and when you look at the evolution of Cochiello, uh, you know that uh, some of the islands which is formed uh, uh, after the intervention of uh, after the creation of port in in 1920, this, the uh, Wellington Island actually formed uh, because of dredging because the 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 uh, the estuary was very small. It's very uh, it was uh, not so deep, so vessels could not uh, actually enter into the uh, port of Cochin. Uh, big big vessel, vessels uh, could not enter into the port uh, into the port so they dig it and kept that um, mud and created an island called wellington island uh, uh, so uh, these kind of interventions even reducing the capacity of uh, your lakes uh, and even uh, that uh, reduce the uh, reduce the carrying capacity of rivers in in various ways so, and one one uh, other issue is here again if you deepen your estuary there's a possibility of uh, more intrusion into your uh, lakes, uh, uh, lakes, and that may end up in your cities. Um, so these issues are highly interlinked, uh, and uh, and the development uh, uh, um, 
what you call departments and things um, uh, de departments and other bodies uh, are not even uh, taking consideration of these basic uh, engineering aspects uh, while they design or implement uh, such uh, uh, projects so that's a very uh, major problem that we are facing uh, now also, even we are, even uh, we have uh, uh, projects where where uh, the first uh, Presenter said that the the developer should uh, provide the the uh, the environmental impact of their development. But the problem here is even the even uh, even if it's a huge development process, even if they uh, provide the environment, even they uh, create an environment or or uh, conduct an environmental impact assessment study. Uh, these are mediocre studies and they are not reflecting uh, the realities or the truths uh, or the real impacts of uh, uh, the, the the project because once you uh, uh, come up with the real impacts uh, um, most often people will oppose it so the consultancies will normally do uh, that uh, no you don't have much bigger uh, environmental crisis due to or maybe problems due to this particular project so we can go ahead so this is this kind of um, uh, uh, collaboration between scientific institutions and developers uh, has really uh, re uh, reduced uh, our resilience uh, when it comes to various kinds of disaster because our um, uh, structures are compromised our systems are compromised in, in various ways so that uh, the the uh, impacts are now uh, becoming uh, magnified and uh, this this is the uh, changes in settlement pattern in, in across kerala and when you you can see that the kochi has been expanding in, a, in, a, in an enormous uh, way this actually eating up mo most of its uh, flood cushions and even uh, the wetlands uh, the spaces that is available uh, to, for the water to store and even to release uh, 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 when it is needed uh, and uh, when you look at uh, uh, the floods in Kochi in particular, you know that it is not that much huge. Uh, the water will not uh, uh, um, uh, rise above your shoulder or something. But in, in when you look at uh, uh, the, the villages near the Periyar or Chalakudi, uh, water was above four or five meters. That means two or three, uh, three uh, uh, actually two uh, um, uh, story buildings, I mean, water may even rose up to that height. Here, you know that this, this is the 16th May. You can see the contrast between the, in the, the two time periods. The August 2nd, that is just uh, uh, three weeks back and 16th May, 2022. The KSRTC Western in Kochi was flooded. This was there was a, a, a rainfall in uh, May 16th, but this was main, mainly due to the uh, the blockage uh, of tidal waters because uh, the uh, because of the increase in tidal uh, currents, uh, tidal height, the water was not uh, drained from the uh, premises of the uh, premises of this uh, the city limits. So this is a, a, a classic case where one is basically due to directly due to the rainfall. The other is uh, the a combined impact of uh, uh, rainfall and a tidal a tidal uh, issue. So uh, and these things uh, get uh, magnified or maybe the impact maybe uh, felt felt uh, more severe when you have human interventions too. So this this uh, even the uh, 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 KSRTC best stand is standing in uh, paddy field. It's called Kamati Padam. Uh, and the nearby places will be uh, normally it was actually a, a paddy field so normally this this area will be flooded whether you uh, do any kind of mitigation or not these are the places will be first flooded uh, so um, uh, so uh, uh, so this, this kind of issues has to be brought in uh, front of the authorities that where you should build and where you should not build uh, based on your vulnerability and and the most critical infrastructure should not be in such vulnerable locations and again, uh, when you look at uh, 2000, it is it is coming uh, as a, a continuous uh, issue because after the 2018, uh, the tidal impact uh, has become more severe, and it is it, it is uh, reducing the thresholds of bearing uh, even a small rainfall even of five centimeters or six centimeters. So whenever the, you have a rainfall of more than ten centimeters, most of the uh, low lying areas of the Kochi will be flooded. Uh, and your uh, your um, uh, resilience is becoming compromised because of uh, increase in sea levels in, in some of the parts. And again, uh, uh, you cannot say that this is only due to this because the uh, uh, the reduction in uh, wetlands and the encroachment in various other parts also contribute. And this is a combined impact of all these uh, aspects uh, when you look at uh, the flooding in Kochi. But uh, when you um, uh, I have go gone to a meeting uh, with the. Uh, district uh, authorities uh, 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 two days back while, while they were, were uh, basically uh, reviewing their flood mitigation plan. 
uh, for Kochi, they have uh, really uh, come up with a good report with uh, some about 400 pages um, uh, with photographs of various um, uh, uh, drainage network uh, and line diagram with indicating the changes of this uh, drainage network. And they have prepared maps uh, of um, uh, drainage network of Kochi. And they um, uh, termed this um, uh, project as uh, uh, Operation Breakthrough to, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to reduce the flood mitigation in Kochi. And they have invested almost four crores uh, uh, for the last uh, one year. Uh, to improve the carrying capacity of uh, the uh, drainage network in Kochi. But the problem you have seen in the last uh, slide, it was happened in August 2nd. Even after uh, they have invested this much of amount, uh, the, the flood uh, impact is not actually reduced. But uh, the thing is that the, the, the rainfall of August 2 was not those, but that much severe. Even, uh, even with that small rainfall, the impact has uh, becoming more, uh, basically because the the procedures, the 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 project which has been running is not based on scientific evaluations and scientific assessments. So the, even though they have prepared a huge report, uh, they have not uh, uh, given even a cross section of their canals, their uh, bed levels. So they don't know what will be the carrying capacity at capacity at different kinds of rainfall scenarios and different kinds of tidal uh, uh, tidal uh, um, tidal uh, events so so this this is a major focus when you look at uh, the drainage map of uh, uh, kochi cooperation you have enough drainage uh, 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 network in this uh, kochi area so that you can really uh, drain out water from the uh, city areas to towards the uh, lake bamrad uh, lake and then towards the uh, kochi uh, uh, the the estuary, uh, but the problem here is uh, uh, this is a crisscrossing uh, kind of uh, 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 drainage network where you, you find that your low lying areas is be, uh, lying between uh, the uh, la bigger landmass in, a, in a, a parallel network so that you cannot drain out water much effectively uh, because of uh, tidal impacts. So this is going to be a severe problem when, uh, when there is a huge rainfall along with the tidal uh, in, uh, in, uh, ingress uh, you are, you cannot even even if you have a huge network and huge capacity to drain out water, water will not drain out because uh, the sea will not take water because of rising sea levels and because of that most of your um, city will be inundated in a permanent manner in the near future. So this is going to be a severe problem for city management, and and uh, because of the salt water ingress. Uh, your uh, life of your structures, the uh, the safety of your structures will be compromised uh, severely, and people are really uh, uh, become refugees now. Now most of the people living in the in the uh, margins of these tidal impact areas, the water is coming inside their homes, and the living condition is being uh, uh, completely compromised, and they are moving out of their houses without any compensation, comp compensation or uh, uh, or anything because uh, tidal flooding is not listed in the disaster uh, disaster uh, list in the state or in the central uh, uh, government so it's it's going it's going to be a huge uh, humanitarian crisis in the in the coastal coastal areas of the whole of uh, india where, because the tidal flooding is not yet considered as a disaster natural disaster and it is going to be a, a severe problem and and you can see that these are the work they have ca carried out for the last um, you know, one year during the uh, summer months and uh, and even during the uh, monsoon months of 2022. Uh, but uh, when you look at the drainage capacity, you know that some of the drainage is very small when compared to, and, and there are blockade blockages uh, before the drainage uh, channels uh, in, in, in uh, like the pipes and other other drainage uh, drainage um, or even water water pipes, which actually blocks water water drainage in, in most of these drains, which actually affects uh, the drainage capacity of this area and and in, and and, and, and uh, it, it it involves uh, a larger a larger area to be inundated and it and the water stays in, the, in most of the time and even the flood water coming coming inside from the sea will not drain out even even if even if the the uh, the low tide happens so this is a major problem that is going to be uh, a permanent issue for the uh, kochi and uh, we need to um, ensure uh, one thing that is very important is we need to have a scientific uh, scientific studies uh, uh, and scientific understanding and and proper technical um, um, uh, reports should be prepared based on that we should carry out um, uh, we should implement our our uh, flood mitigation work otherwise all this money that we poured 
on the flood risk mitigation work will, will not be uh, of any, any use to the people to reduce any kind of floods in the in near future. So uh, thank you all uh, for uh, listening to me. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Madhu. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, presentation. Uh, I will quickly and very briefly, I will try to tell you what Madhu has told you in Hindi. So, Hindi mein batao. Um, to, uh, apni jo hai baat ki is se rakhi, jo Professor Janakarajan ne kaha ki bhai, uh, 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 climate change uh, से ज्यादा human intervention की वजह से जो है uh, floods हो रही है तो उन्होंने कहा कि वो एक एक unending debate है वो 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 चर्चा बहुत लंबी है uh, लंबे समय से हो रहा है लेकिन उनका ये मानना है कि uh, ये uh, जलवायु परिवर्तन और human intervention दोनों का एक एक cumulative impact है uh, और और इसके लिए जो है uh, एक एक जरूरत है कि हम uh, पूरी चीज को जो है scientifically देखें holistically देखें और इसके solutions को भी scientifically और holistically ढूंढें तभी जाके जो है ये uh, uh, ये मुद्दा को हम मुद्दे को हम solve कर पाएंगे उन्होंने कहा कि human intervention negative ही नहीं होता है positive भी होता है और uh, flood management में जितनी भी human interventions हैं वो positive हो सकती हैं uh, क्योंकि जिस तरह से drainage को design किया जा सकता है या हम जिस तरह से uh, शहर का जो विकास uh, को देखते हैं ये सारी चीजें human intervention से uh, climate change के जो भी effects है उसको mitigate भी किया जा सकता है uh, उन्होंने कहा कि कोची के बारे में जब वो बात उन्होंने शुरू की तो उन्होंने कहा कि एक बहुत बड़ी आपदा से खड़ी हुई है कोची शहर जो है uh, वो uh, uh, 1341 में 1341 में uh, uh, ये जब ए, एक एस्टुरी बनी वो एक एक बहुत बड़ी नेचुरल डिजास्टर के वजह से बनी है और उन्होंने uh, बोला है कि भाई जिस अगर आप एवरेज रेनफॉल देखेंगे जो बारिश का जो स्तर है एवरेज वो वो जो है बहुत कम हुआ है या कंसिस्टेंट रहा है लेकिन एक्सट्रीम जो 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 बारिश का ये जो रेनफॉल का जो पैटर्न है वो जो बार-बार जो है वो वो बढ़ बढ़ता जा रहा है और वो कहीं ना कहीं ये जो शहरी बाढ़ है इस पे और उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि कोची का केस थोड़ा सा पिक्युलियर है इन द सेंस दैट और वो पिक्युलियर uh, है हर वो शहर का जो कोस्टल सिटी है uh, क्योंकि क्लाइमेट uh, चेंज की वजह से अगर हम देखें तो सी uh, लेवल जो है राइज हो रहा है uh, और जब जब uh, जो बात हो रही है कि भाई ड्रेनेज होना चाहिए और ड्रेनेज ब्लॉक हो रही हैं और जो नेचुरल ड्रेनेज सिस्टम्स हैं वो वर्क नहीं कर रही हैं तो उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि हमको ये भी देखना है कि जब सी लेवल राइज होता है तो जो नेचुरल ड्रेनेज सिस्टम्स हैं वो फेल होना शुरू करती है क्योंकि कहीं ना कहीं जो है हाई टाइड में पानी अंदर घुसता है सी से शहर की तरफ और या ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट तो जरूर करता है वो नेचुरल ड्रेनेज प्रोसेस को और कुछ ही एक एग्जांपल वो कह रहे हैं कि इस, इसका एक बहुत अहम एग्जांपल है uh, जब वो uh, बता रहे थे कि uh, इसका बहुत सारा मतलब ये रोज कोची में देखा जाता है कि किस तरह से बारिश नहीं भी होती है बहुत ज्यादा तो भी रेलवे स्टेशन बस स्टैंड जैसे जगह uh, जो है फ्लडेड हो जाती है uh, बहुत ज्यादा नहीं लेकिन थोड़ा मतलब पानी उसमें आता है और ठहरता है और वो इसलिए है क्योंकि जो हाई uh, टाइड में पानी जो है सी का अंदर आता है और उन्होंने कहा कि इससे uh, जो है नुकसान सिर्फ लोगों को नहीं होता इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को भी उससे नुकसान होता है आ, उन्होंने कहा कि ये जो है बहुत आ, हमको होलिस्टिकली देखना पड़ेगा स्लोप के मैप्स हाइट हाइट वाटर लेवल्स टाइड्स ये सब को समझ के जो है वो प्लानिंग करनी पड़ेगी उन्होंने कहा कि 2018 में जो कोची में फ्लड्स हुए वो उस उस पूरे उस साल में एक्चुअली जो एवरेज रेनफॉल है वो एक्चुअली कम था नॉर्मल से नीचे था लेकिन एक्सट्रीम फॉल जो इवेंट्स हुए वो बहुत हाई थे आ, जिसकी वजह से जो है ये 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 फ्लड्स की चीजें हुई उन्होंने कहा कि इसके साथ डैम मैनेजमेंट और रिवर मैनेजमेंट का भी एक बहुत बड़ा रोल रहता है शहरी बाढ़ में और आ, वो आ, बहुत आ, जो है आ, अफेक्ट करता है और आ, उस उसको भी मतलब वो भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि भाई जैसे कि 2018 के जो फ्लड्स हैं केरला के उसका मेन कॉज या उसका मेन कारण रहा है डैम्स का मिसमैनेजमेंट एक 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 मेन कारण रहा है रेनफॉल बहुत हेवी रेनफॉल इन द 
शॉर्ट पीरियड भी रहा है लेकिन उसके साथ साथ डैम का जो मिसमैनेजमेंट हुआ है वो भी रहा है इसके अलावा उन्होंने एक और कारण बताया ये फ्लडिंग को समझाने के लिए कि क्यों हो रहा है उन्होंने कहा जो खनन हो रहा है बालू का जो खनन होता है सैंड माइनिंग जो हो रही है वो खनन चालकुड़ी पेरियार ये सारे जो नदियां हैं वहां पे जो खनन हो रहा है अवैध रूप से जो खनन हो रहा है इससे ये हो रहा है कि जो रिवर बेड है वो नीचे जा रहा है और वो मेन सी लेवल से भी नीचे चला जा रहा है बिलो सी लेवल एंड इससे भी यही प्रॉब्लम होता है कि जो है तीन से चार मीटर बिलो सी लेवल होने के कारण भी एक्चुअली पानी वापस इस तरफ घुसता है तो इस तरह से जो है उसके बहुत सारे इश्यूज हैं एक तो वो जो फ्रेश वाटर सोर्स है जो कि ये सारे रिवर्स या ये जो वाटर बॉडीज जो फ्रेश वाटर का सोर्स होता है जैसे कोचि के इसमें उन्होंने कहा कि भाई सैनिटेशन और पानी की जो भी नीड्स हैं पूरे शहर का उसको मीट करती है वहाँ के वाटर बॉडीज और रिवर्स और ये जो सलाइन वाटर का जो जो आना है जो नमकीन पानी जो है जो सी से जो घुस रहा है अंदर उससे जो है फ्रेश वाटर भी मतलब प्रॉब्लमेटिक हो जाता है तो तो उनका ये मेन कहना था कि भाई जो वेटलैंड का डिस्ट्रक्शन है उन्होंने एग्जांपल में ये भी कहा कि जैसे के एस आर टी सी वहाँ का जो बस स्टैंड है हो या हो या फिर जो एयरपोर्ट है ये सारे जो है पैडी लैंड पे वहाँ पे जो पैडी लैंड है उस के ऊपर खड़ा किया गया है अगेन हमने सोच हम हम जितने भी अपने वाटर बॉडीज हैं जिस जो पानी सोखता हाँ वेटलैंड जो पानी सोखती वो 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 हमने डिस्ट्रॉय कर दिया है तो ये सारी चीजें उन्होंने कहा कि जो ई की बात हो रही थी बहुत बार ये होता है कि जो ई कंसल्टेंट्स होते हैं वो हैंड इन ग्लव होते हैं सरकार के साथ और प्रोजेक्ट प्रोपोनेंस के साथ मिलकर के तो कभी उनके जो रिपोर्ट्स होते हैं वो कभी भी जमीन पे जो सच्चाई है वो नहीं दर्शाते वो ये नहीं दिखाता कि जमीन पे एक्चुअली क्या हो रहा है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो भी एक बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम है कि हम किस तरह से उसको चैलेंज करें भी तो किस तरह से करें हुसैन ने ये बोला था शुरुआत में कि हम लोगों को जो है ओनर्स और बर्डन शिफ्ट करना चाहिए प्रोजेक्ट प्रोपोनेंस पे उसी से जोड़ के उन्होंने कहा कि यहाँ पे प्रोजेक्ट प्रोपोनेंस जो कंसल्टेंट सी आई करवाते हैं वो बिल्कुल बोगस ही होता है तो ये बात थी तो कुल मिलाकर वो ये बात कर रहे थे कि जो साइंटिफिक इवेल्युएशन है और जो असेसमेंट्स हैं उसकी बहुत अहमियत है ये पूरी फ्लड मैनेजमेंट में और ड्रेनेज सिस्टम्स को किस तरह से क्योंकि उन्होंने बहुत सारे एग्जांपल्स दिए कि किस तरह से अभी केरला पोस्ट फ्लड्स उन्होंने बहुत डिटेल बजट्स बना करके बहुत इन्वेस्ट भी कर करके पूरा फ्लड मैनेजमेंट प्लान भी बनाया कोची के लिए केरला के लिए लेकिन डिस्पाइट दैट वो प्लान होने के बावजूद भी जो है फ्लड्स हो रहे हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं सिर्फ प्लान होना मैप्स होना या इससे इस नहीं है डिपार्टमेंट्स में साइंटिफिक नॉलेज की कमी उस जब प्रोजेक्ट्स इंप्लीमेंट होते हैं या इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स की जो इंप्लीमेंटेशन होती है उसमें साइंटिफिक नॉलेज की कमी हो या साइंटिफिक माइंड्स नहीं लगाए जा रहे लोग अपनी वो 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 उसकी बहुत कमी हो रही है जिसके वजह से ये जो है पूरी प्रॉब्लम जो है लगातार क्रिएट हो रही है और ये पूरी प्रॉब्लम जो है क्लाइमेट चेंज जो है डेफिनेटली एग्रवेट भी कर रही है तो तो आगे बढ़ते हैं थैंक यू सो मच मधु फॉर दैट फॉर दैट डिटेल प्रेजेंटेशन वील मूव अहेड डॉक्टर लुबना के साथ जो हमारे लास्ट स्पीकर हैं लुबना लुबना को ओवर टू यू लुबना फॉर योर प्रेजेंटेशन Yes, you are audible. I'm sharing my screen. Are you able to share? No, I'm not able to. Arundhati, can you just one words from? So she has the right to share. So I mean, like yeah, she's a co-host. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can share. Can you just share, Lubna? You're a co-host. So for that, uh, I mean, I should just open this. Yeah, just open your presentation. Click on share screen at the bottom of your Zoom. Click on share screen. Yeah. Yeah, I click to share screen. Yeah. Okay. And now select the presentation if you can see it. Select the uh, the window to the presentation. Okay. 
a share okay select either yes. a tab or a window yes yes, yes. yes. yeah thank you Oh, yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks to NABM. I'm sorry about the earlier disturbance. Thanks to NABM and uh, greetings of peace uh, to one and all. Uh, uh, I would like to open. I कुछ संविधान के कुछ शब्दों के साथ मैं शुरुआत करना चाहती हूँ. जहाँ पर संविधान अपना भारत का संविधान ही कहता है. इसे स्टेट के ऊपर एक बहुत बड़ी जिम्मेदारी है संविधान की ओर से कि आप एनडीवर करेंगे कि प्रोटेक्ट नहीं सिर्फ प्रोटेक्ट करेंगे बल्कि आप इंप्रूव करेंगे पूरी एनवीरमेंट को आप इंप्रूव करेंगे और उसको सेफ गार्ड करेंगे पूरी वाइल्ड लाइफ फॉरेस्ट को सभी को इतनी बड़ी जिम्मेदारी संविधान के तहत में डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल गवर्नमेंट पे पूरी स्टेट पे है उसके अलावा जो नागरिक है हम लोग हम सारे पब्लिक पे भी ये जिम्मेदारी डाला हुआ है आर्टिकल फिफ्टी वन ए के जरिए फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज में कि चल भी तो ड्यूटी हर हर नागरिक की जिम्मेदारी रहेगी कि वो ना सिर्फ प्रोटेक्ट करेंगे बल्कि इंप्रूव भी करेंगे पूरी नेचुरल एनवायरमेंट को फॉरेस्ट लेक्स रिवर्स एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ और कंपैशन रहेगा हर लिविंग क्रीचर्स के लिए ये तो संविधान की बातें हैं तो ये इतनी बढ़िया संविधान है जहां पर हम लोग सभी लोगों को इस पे गरीब से गौर करने की बहुत बहुत जरूरत आ चुकी है मुझे नहीं मालूम दूसरे देश के संविधानों के बारे में बल्कि इतनी अच्छी चीज है कि इंट्रोड्यूस किया गया अपने संविधान में सो आई थिंक वी मस्ट पे अटेंशन टू दिस इसलिए मैं बेहतरीन समझी की इन बातों से ही मैं अपनी शुरुआत करूं मैं अभी हम लोग जो एक्सट्रीम्स देख रहे हैं दुनिया में आज ही की बात है अगर ये तो इस इस समय की जो बात अगर ये तो दुनिया की इस वेस्ट हिस्से में स्पेन में वगैरह में बहुत सारे फायर्स चल रहे हैं और नॉन स्टॉप और देखे कि लास्ट महीने वहां पर तो इंग्लैंड में तो हॉटेस्ट क्लाइमेट था और अभी भी फायर्स चल रहे हैं और इस तरफ एशिया की तरफ आए तो हम लोग देख रहे कि यहाँ पर फ्लड्स हो रहे हैं और उसकी दूसरी तरफ वी आर ड्रॉट एट सम प्लेसेस एंड वी आर ड्राइविंग एट सम प्लेसेस तो ये एक्सट्रीम्स के बीच में आ, मुझे सीरियसली मुझे लगता है एज ए वेल बींग इकोनॉमिस्ट मुझे लगता है कि दुनिया में रिसोर्सेस की कमी नहीं है बल्कि दुनिया में एथिक्स की नैतिकता की कमी है उस... इंपॉर्टेंट की सुंदरलाल बहुगुणा जी जो टीवी की जो बातें हैं कि इकोलॉजी इज इकोनॉमी इन एनवायरमेंट इज डेवलपमेंट तो इनकी जो बातों पे गौर करना सरकार को हर नागरिक की जिम्मेदारी है कि कितनी बेहतरीन एक बहुत वो जो शब्द भी देकर गए हो तो उस पर अपने को गौर करना पड़ेगा सो मैम वही द लेटेस्ट रिपोर्ट जो आईपीसीसी की भी जो रिपोर्ट आई है उसमें वॉटर स्पेसिस की जो इंपॉर्टेंस लोग बताए तो वो वी एबल टू सी कि ऐसा बोले कि वाई आर दिटीज द हॉट स्पॉट ऑफ ग्लोबल वार्मिंग है तो उससे आप कैसा उसको कम्बैक्ट करेंगे हाउ यू एनेबल दिटीज टू रिलीव एंड हाउ यू कम्बैक्ट दिस तो कम्बैक्ट कैसे करेंगे वन ऑफ दी टू ऑफ दिज दिशो वन इज वॉटर एंड वन इज वेजिटेशन सो द एक्वा स्पेसिस की जो बात कर रहे हैं सी रिवर लेक्स एंड इरीगेशन ऑल दीज चैनल्स एंड वेटलैंड इन सभी की हिफाजत की इतनी बात यहाँ पर लाई हुई है आईबीसीसी की लेटेस्ट रिपोर्ट से भी ये मेरा नहीं है आईबीसी रिपोर्ट का सीधा मैं उनको यहाँ पर पेश कर रही हूँ तो इतनी साइंस है इतनी सब कुछ नॉलेज रहने के बावजूद वी आर नॉट एबल टू डू समथिंग तो इसीलिए मैं आ रही हूँ बात पे कि इट्स लैक ऑफ एथिक्स इट्स लैक ऑफ एथिक्स इन गवर्नेंस एंड ऑल्सो I would put it mostly on the governments because governments are there with the chief responsibility because there will be some people who will not follow the law. There will be people who want to evade the law, and that is why the governments is there to see that everything comes equal to everybody. So that is why if people ask me also, okay, how are you always shielding the citizen? I would say that the government is being paid to look after so that people don't evade the law, evade the law, or override the law. That's why the government and the officials they elect today. Um, governments, the elected people, representatives, and the selected officials so pay for that, and they are not doing that. So that's why I always say that the first responsibility is with the state. That's how I feel it. Now coming back uh, exclusively to Hyderabad, this is something that uh, when I saw. Uh, Uh, colleagues, Mr. Chakri also he has given this uh, entire uh, KML file of all the you know, nearly three thousand lakes. They you have know, given this to the government. So in that we see red. In fact, he took all the pains and uh, comparing to the survey from the sheet. Uh, way back in 2014, this was handed over to the government, and there was no action till now. Yeah, all these red are the missing lakes from the database. So we told them please include them. We don't have any response to it. They are in the jurisdiction and. 
blue are the decentry jurisdiction lakes. These are all just the lakes. I'm talking about just the lakes. There are so many other types of hot bodies, like you know, you have all those channels, you have all those wells, historic heritage wells. So, so many we have in Hyderabad, uh, but none of those have been included. In fact, our uh, government told that uh, uh, you will have to look for that somewhere else. We Lake Bilgen does not take care of the uh, wells, and we do want to do it not as a charity from some NGO or something, but we want it as a policy. As a policy, what is the government telling about the water wells? Have they identified all the wells? All these sort of things have to be happening like that. Now, I am showing you another maps that we all, because through maps, we can, I, I want you all to quickly understand uh, coming where I'm coming from in Hyderabad. See, the, um, the, uh, the blue lines uh, in the center, this is the Musi River. We are a blessed uh, state, Telangana, and a blessed city, Hyderabad, uh, because the Musi River is an exclusively Telangana River. It starts uh, from Vikarabad, which to the west. It starts from here, west of the Hyderabad. This entire portion in this uh, Sarah and uh, uh, River, this is in uh, Hyderabad. And this blue uh, thing river is flowing from the cutting through the Hyderabad, the North Basin and the South Basin. And uh, this river flows only in Telangana and joins the Krishna River near Vadapalli. So it's around 250 kilometers river. And more than 40 to 60 kilometers of it flows through the municipal limits of Hyderabad. So now, why uh, urban floods ka iska kya connection hai? So, my ye bata na chahi hoon ki, ye jo humare paas jo ye do reservoirs hai, Humayat Sagar aur Usman Sagar. Is 1908 na Hyderabad mein bho bhaankar floods aay thai. Bhaankar floods aay aate sa mein, jab jo jimizam thi jab na, wo unhi ne socha ki, phir karo awam ko ya public ko, there should never face any such difficulty. So, isi liye unhi ne sir Vishweshwar Aya ko, jo jab diwaan thai Mysore ko, unko bulaay, aur un do, unki dono ki nahi let's say we do dance say usman sagar dam yaha par bani or usman hibad sagar ki dam yaha par bani lekin सरकार 1908 के बाद दोहन 2000 में जब किसी ने इंडस्ट्रीज खड़ा करने की कोशिश की यहाँ पर तो सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जब केस गया तो ये जो प्रिंसिपल जो मैं प्रीवियस स्पीकर्स बात कर रहे थे बड़े मार्क प्रूफ की सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने अपनी सरी पेज ऑर्डर में बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ की प्रिंसिपल के तहत और प्रिकॉशनरी कि जीरो टोटल वन जो है विच इसकी जो पैरा थ्री है जिसमें द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द होटल्स द मॉल्स द हाइडेज सब कुछ प्रोहिबिट किया हुआ है उसको उन्होंने मना किए थे तो इन द बैन वाज ब्रॉट इन बाय द जीरो टोटल वन इन 1996 तो आज 2022 में 2000 2000 में सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उस जीरो ट्रिपल वन को अपहोल्ड किए व्हिच इज द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ द कैचमेंट एरिया ऑफ दिस टू डैम्स व्हिच आर एक्चुअली सप्लाइंग एंड द स्पेशलिटी ऑफ दिस टू Dances, they are intended and the reservoirs are formed and from the reservoir we get by gravity pure drinking water to the city. So that's the specialty, uh, the historic, the 100 year old dams, the dam health also has to be taken care of. But instead of taking care of anything of that sort, the first and always key khasi thay baat hai ki, 1908 में जब फ्लड्स आया था, उसके बाद फिर हैदराबाद को कभी-कभी फ्लड्स नहीं आए आज तक। कर्टिसी टू दिस टू बैंड्स विद एफर्स ऑफ़ दी एक्स निजाम एंड दी सर विश्वेश्वरया। तो लेकिन आज के दिन क्या है? 2022 में the present government it repealed the zero triple one की जो बैंड थी उसको रिपील कर दिए, रिपील करके उसको वहाँ पर पूरी अभी जो जो we removed the elders, um, I mean, the uh, ban on those constructions, and uh, we don't know now further what will happen and how we will be able to handle. So, uski ek manuna kya hui thi? I'll, uh, I don't know what this is. Yes. So, yes. So, yahan par ye jo sheet mein aapko bata nahi. Again, this is also all these are not my uh, my diagrams. They are all from the official website, even the previous slide. So, what we see is Osman Sagar, Munal Sagar. That even today, even on 19th of August, they supplied 56 and. 29 MGD water to Hyderabad by gravity. Pure rain water impounded at the west of the Hyderabad and given to the Hyderabad is a best arrangement both from the nature and from the ex rulers. But somehow our uh, government, present government has is not caring for the dams and also for the, um, the drinking water that is coming with at such cheap cost with uh, uh, gravity and pure waters. And now we see that um, in spite of 
of this, uh, just even today we are receiving so much 68 million, 29 GB, but still the government told that uh, we, no, we don't need this water, we are getting waters from uh, Krishna and from Godavari. So Krishna which is to the south of, in the southern part of Telangana and Godavari which is in the northern part of Telangana. So they want to draw water from there, 250 uh, kilometers and 100 kilometers of Krishna and they're telling the city people that we know for you can uh, bring water from here. We, that means Hyderabad, even though it is having so many lakes and water bodies and a uh, two reservoirs and dams right in the vicinity of the uh, lake of the uh, Hyderabad city. But still, the point is that the government, government thinks that we need not uh, bring from here. They will do what they want to do with it. Uh, we are going to be given bringing water from somewhere else and we are brought to our knees. This is how uh, the governance is functioning. The citizens did not ask for this. This uh, governance will pick uh, this step. So we should not uh, um, forget that. I don't know this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lubna. Yeah, one minute. I have, I have not concluded. May I conclude? Right, you are trying to take this line, right? Yeah, no, no. I am uh, uh, trying to just uh, come. One second. Uh, I am trying to just share. No, one important point that we have to uh, we, uh, we have to observe is just this. Uh, I will show you this one. So now, why, why this has become very important for us is that this, uh, this as the sort of. Do you want to? Pardon? Do you want to take a pause? No, I am already sharing my screen. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Acha, um, you want me to take a pause? No, no, I don't want you to. I oh, okay. You. No, no, not at all. So what happened now is that uh, when we uh, look into the encroachments of the reservoir, Usman Sagar, see Usman Sagar, we have the Oro Sports Village, which is a, um, a, a vanity, and that is right inside the reservoir, okay? Similarly, we have uprooted uh, water, uprooted uh, um, uh, FTL pillars like this inside the reservoir, and there are compound walls inside the reservoir, and uh, here are all the uprooted, and the road, road is going through the reservoir. And CJR uh, is always close right inside the reservoir as per satellite also. So the point that we are trying to say is, see here, what we are trying to see, that uh, the vast, there are vast stretches of land inside the reservoir. Now, the point that we are trying to tell now, you see all these vast stretches of land inside the reservoir. So none of these have been bridged. What we are trying to tell is, none of these have been bridged. Now I'll just uh, quickly uh, uh, stop sharing and now we will, I'll just quickly tell some points because I know everything is getting delayed. The point is that on um, on the 26th of July and in the um, uh, month of August also, in the name of floods, what, we, what was done was uh, more than 10,000, uh, uh, 10,700 Q6 was let out from these reservoirs because telling that there are 10,000 Q6 of inflows, we are releasing 10,704 uh, Q6 from Nimayat Sagar and another 6,000 Q6 from Usman Sagar. Now the point here is that when the reservoir had so many of encroachments, so much of land stretches inside the reservoir and so much of vanity encroachments officially identified also, but still without removing all of those, they simply told that there is a huge inflow that is why we are releasing all the waters. So this is the level of uh, the brazen governance that is happening here. There is no citizen's fault here, right? In fact, the citizens are put to trauma because all these pure drinking waters have to be stored so that in, we don't have a drought in the summer. And we don't know what is the future of this uh, in these extreme sorts of weathers. So now this being one part of it that you all you are the, the dams in the reservoirs inside the city limits are being handled in this manner. Now there is another point to all this why Hyderabad is suffering from floods. As told by my previous speakers also the point is that the lakes and uh, the lakes, the channels the connecting channels uh, uh, are all highly encroached. Uh, they are actually face a pitiful attack. When each their area gets encroached, and then you have a lot of uh, stink and the pollution inside that, and then the holding capacity of the water body and also the carrying capacity of the channels and the carrying capacity of the Mercy River is seriously compromised. 
we do all this so a uh, uh, previous uh, um, speaker was also telling that how much do we go on begin it is not about how much do we do on because every channel every water body has its memoirs the memoirs are telling what is the original capacity so we may dig or we may widen it and remove the crevices only to a that capacity so i know the when the things will differ from the coastal and from the um, city uh, contours and all that will differ so now coming down to another point you know that uh, when we have the water imported from outside the city into it to the uh, krishna nagar uh, waters and godavari waters and we are not allowing our own the huge copious rains that are coming here they are not being impounded in the city and this is across india where when coming to hyderabad particularly we are blessed with so many water bodies now because the river is running through the city as a showed in the slide the north basin and the south basin has numerous water bodies and the water bodies are not just random like that you know they are actually from an high altitude they are cascading through the outflow channel to a lower contour to a lower contour and draining into the musi nadi and this arrangement is there on Either sides or the bases, that's the north basin and the south basin. So, what I am saying is that if we have this system, which has been cascaded from above, if we restore this system, then it is enough. Never, nobody will be have to dread, I mean, dread the rain, dread the flood, dread any extreme. We can safely watch the beauty and the 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 the
कन्वेंशनल सिस्टम क्या कर रहे हैं और उसको इंक्रीज करते जा रहे हैं जो कि अनसस्टेनेबल है अनहैंडलेबल है अन एडमिनिस्ट्रेबल है जो उसको क्या कर रहे हैं हर घर को पाइप लगा देना स्वेज को और वो स्वेज की पाइप कहीं कहीं चले जा रहा कहां जाएगा भाई तालाब में जाएगा चैनल्स में जाएगा अब एसटीपीस कहां हैंडल कर पाएंगे और एसटीपीस कितना क्लीन करेंगे इसको एंड एसटीपीस हु सेड दैट दे आर गोइंग टू एबल टू क्लीन द फार्मा वाटर द इंडस्ट्री वाटर द स्वेज वाटर वी गो देयर इज अ प्रूफ दे नो हिस्टोरिकल प्रूफ फॉर अस नो लेगेसी एट ऑल अबाउट देयर क्लीन क्लीनिंग ऑफ द वाटर्स तो हम बोले कि हम दो चीज बोले उनको एक आप सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट रूल्स को बराबर इंप्लीमेंट करिए आप उसको हमेशा तमाशा कर रहे हो उसको बंद करिए उसका अच्छा इंप्लीमेंट करिए सेकंड थिंग हम ये बोले कि आप ऑल्टरनेटिव मेथोडोलॉजीज पे आओ क्यों क्योंकि ह्यूमन फिकी है जो जो वाटर से कांटेक्ट करता है तब वो गंदा बन जाता है अगर उसको सूखा रखे उसको सोबस से में डाल डाले या फिर उसके ऊपर मट्टी डाले तो वो कंपोस्ट बन जाता है और ये काफी प्रूफ है कि ये हो रहा है और ये पॉसिबल है तो ये क्यों नहीं कर रही है Why? Because it is so simple. We don't want simple things. We don't want small things. Something gigantic is needed for us. We can solve huge problems with small, small, small things, and we have to know the nature is forcing us to move towards naturality and towards small and get real big to small investments to small thoughts. But we are not learning. But we have to learn. Nature is forcing us to learn. So, how many alternative methodologies keep on both emphasizing? But the government is doing it. But we are with the help of Canadian, with the help of so many other people, who spoke. We are trying to even do that. So, we do. पाइप प्रोलिफरेशन ऑफ वेस्ट जो होती होती जा रही है इसकी कहीं ना कहीं तो हमने उसको डिसिप्लिनाइज करना चाहिए हम जब दिल्ली की मीटिंग में भी हम जब तीस के चेयरमैन थे और जब वेंकैया नायडू जी मऊ के मिनिस्टर थे उनसे भी हम रूबरू हम मुखातिबों के हम बात कर रहे हैं हम उनको बोले कि सर दिस डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन की सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट वी सर हैंडल इट वर्ड वाइज वर्ड वाइज आप सेग्रीगेट एट सोर्स और हैंडल डिसेंट्रलाइज करो पूरी मामला खत्म हो जाएगा यू मेल बी to handle in such a dirty manner to the waste collector our brothers and sisters and also with a very very um, very the word up to the word mein ki the constitution mein sabse smallest demarcation jo diya hai wo hai word to us municipal demarcation mein kyun kiya kyunki the better administration better handling more transparency more ease of governance to ye sab cheeze aapko solidus management pe apply ye this segregation at source aur aap ye kariye wo bhi nahi kare wo nahi ho raha hai to aap to bahut aayenge uske bare mein uske baad jo hum bole waste waters ko bhi hum hum jo वार्ड की कॉर्पोरेटर की भी हम कंटेस्ट करते हैं इंडिपेंडेंट के तौर पे हम बोले कि हम जब कॉर्पोरेटर होंगे तो हमारे वार्ड से ना या एम एन में Yeah, I'm concluding. I'm concluding. So because I'm trying to give the solutions also, I'm, uh, that's why I'm just uh, coming to conclusion. <laughs> तो हम ये बोल रहे हैं कि कि ये जो हम कॉर्पोरेटर ने अपनी सोचनी चाहिए कि हमारी जो वार्ड की बाउंड्री है उसके बाहर ना हमारी सॉलिड वेस्ट जाना चाहिए ना हमारी लिक्विड वेस्ट जाना चाहिए तो इस हिसाब से जब जब सोचेंगे तो वो दैट इज कॉल्ड साइंटिफिक थॉट दैट इज कॉल्ड ए गवर्नमेंट थॉट तो ऐसी कई आई मीन सोल्यूशन जो कि अपनी लॉ महात्मा डे भी बोल रही है जो कि संविधान भी बोल रही है और जो कि हम हमारी कॉमन सेंस की बात हो रही है इन सब के बावजूद हम ना फ्लो जब रेन की जो फ्लो है उसकी फ्लो की बात के लिए जो जो होना हम लोग नहीं कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद हम जो जनरेशन ऑफ दी स्वेज वाटर इट सेल्फ विच इज ऑल्सो अनदर चीफ फ्लो दट इज गोइंग थ्रू दी चैनल्स उसके लिए हम बोले कि आप इसको आप यू कैन नॉट कंटामिनेट एनी ऑफ दिस विथ आई फ्रीटेड वाटर और विद दिस डायरेक्ट स्वेज वाटर और हम बोले कि इसको आप ट्रीट करें तो आप रियूज करो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की ऑर्डर्स भी है कि आप रियूज करो अपनी विसिनिटी में हैंडल करो विसिनिटी में ट्रीट करो और विसिनिटी में रियूज करो दिट इज एज गुड एज गोइंग टू द लेक देन एज गुड एज यूज इन इट सो दीज आर द टाइम्स दट यू बिंग मोर एंड मोर विसिनिटी और मैं एंड में मैं एक बताना चाह रही हूँ सबको कि आप सबसे रिक्वेस्ट कर रही हूं मैं कि आप लोग अपनी अपनी क्या बोलते हो अपनी अपनी विसिनिटी में जो वाटर बॉडी है उसकी आप बराबर आप 
पेयर करिए उसको आप पता करिए कि उसकी एड्रेस क्या है अपार्टमेंट की होती है माधुरी अपार्टमेंट या सोयन से अपार्टमेंट लेकिन लेख के बाद नाम नहीं रहता है जैसे कि लेख को नाम ही नहीं है तो उसकी लेख के नाम रहना चाहिए उसकी बाउंड्री रहनी चाहिए बचर जोन के बाउंड्री होना चाहिए तो आप लोग बराबर अपनी लेख में अपनी विस्तृति में लेख आइडेंटिफाई करिए और उसके ऊपर आप काम शुरू करिए सिंपल सिंपल वर्ड बिकॉज सबके ऊपर जिम्मेदारी है सो दीज वर्ड आई वॉन्ट टू टेल बट वी ऑल शुड टेक केयर ऑफ लेक्स एंड विद स्मॉल कपलेट दैट इन इंग्लिश लेक्स आर लाइक द आईज ऑफ द अर्थ एंड लेट एस डू टेक केयर ऑफ देम एज डू दी आई लिव्स तो ये जो झीलें हैं या तालाब हैं वो जमीन के आंखों के मानिंग है आ, तो आइए हम सब मिलके उसको पलकों की तरह उसको हम महफूज करें तो इस इन शब्दों से आई एम टेलिंग दैट रेन शुड नॉट बी ए ड्रेड रेन शुड बी ए प्लेजर एंड लेट एस ऑल एंजॉय एंड दैट कैन कम ओनली थ्रू अ वेरी गुड डायरेक्ट सिस्टम लास्ट एंड लास्ट में उस बात में ये बोल रही हूँ कि इट इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द टॉप ड्रेनेज लेकिन इंजीनियरिंग की रिपोर्ट में खुला लिखा हुआ है जो टूटर में सुप्रीम कोर्ट के ऑर्डर भी है इंजीनियरिंग की रिपोर्ट भी है उसमें भी लिखा हुआ है कि इफ ऑन दी वॉटर शेड में हमको दिख रहा है कि इट इज फ्लोइंग ऑन दी नॉर्थ साइड एंड नॉर्थ ऑन द साउथ साइड लेकिन नीचे जमीन में जो डाइक्स रहते हैं दो डाइक्स आर इनेबलिंग डाइक्स का वॉटर शेड अलग है डाइक्स में क्या आ रहा है वो फिर से इस तरफ नॉर्थ की तरफ ही जा रहा है सो so, साइंस इतनी एडवांस है तो साइंस की सुनना चाहिए अपन में कॉमन सेंस की भी सुनना चाहिए सो वी जस्ट कॉन गो बाय द वॉटर शेड दिन द टॉप बट वी ऑल्सो यू हैव टू लुक इन टू द डाइक्स देर की जमीन के अंदर की जो डाइक्स है वो नॉर्थ उसकी वॉटर फ्लो कहां पर है कभी वो पर रात की अदर साइड जाता है तो बाइक में इस तरफ आ रहा है वापस से वॉटर शेड की तरफ आ रहा है सो विद दिस वाज अ कंप्लीट ये दे दोगे या थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू लुबना फॉर दैट वेरी पैशनेट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड आई एम नॉट गोइंग इनटू ट्रांसलेशन बिकॉज़ लुबना ने दोनों दोनों अपनी मतलब हिंदी में भी रखी है अपनी बात और अंग्रेजी में ही वेरी क्विकली देयर वर no there was a question i think uh, jo hai uh, if 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 uh, i think the question was for madhu uh, it was uh, basically after 2018 floods um, it was uh, they said that because of ban banning sand mining in kerala rivers uh, the drainage system is not working well so is it true what's your view also one more question could you elaborate a little on the effects of sand mining on increased flooding impacts on rivers she was in a bad mood because she had been caught up in much about so uh, both of this very quickly if madhu you could get into this and uh, uh, answer this uh, very briefly uh, along with your Uh, you know two sentences of your concluding remarks and then i'll quickly ask hussein to just uh, speak his concluding remarks and we can kind of end it yeah thank you uh, the first question uh, is about the silting of rivers uh, after the floods of 2018 and uh, the outcry for removing the silt and cleaning uh, the drainage paths uh, for the for the water to drain out to the sea so the first one is uh, no the, the problem is uh, this is a basic misconception uh, that uh, the rivers are clogged uh, due to this floods of 2018 what we have done is for the last 40 50 years we have removed almost all the sands which is uh, available in the river beds and this is almost uh, below sea level most of the even the, la- the 50 kilometers of the sea, sea stretches are below sea level and now this been affected by sea water intrusion so even if if you dig more it's not going to change anything so there may be some places where the clogs are there and may be due to the uh, uh, trees and trunks and other things which may have um, deposited in some parts but that may have to be taken away but on an, an average when you look at the sea uh, i mean river bed it is not clog it is not silted up it will take thousands of years to bring back to the original state so that's the thing so it starts and will not be come back in one or two years in one or two floods it will take hundreds of years thousands of years so we have removed all these sands uh, which is accumulated over the thousands of years within just 40 years and now it is gone below sea level and now the rivers are affected by sea water intrusion so even within the uh, in, in in interior portions of the um, uh, river this, the saline water is intrude, intruding and people are losing uh, their um, crops and even people are getting salt water uh, into their homes because of pumping this water into the uh, um, uh, uh, water water authority systems and other other ways and the other po- 
uh, question is the flooding, whether the flood, flooding is related to sand mining, the, the, the cause and effect of sand mining and flooding. So when you look at the flooding, there are three types of flooding. The one is river related flooding. The other one is tidal flooding. And there is another kind of flooding, which is sea surges. The tidal flooding is the, the increase in tidal level uh, will intrude through your water channels, through your river mouths into the river, uh, river and it will uh, inundate the lower low lying areas, maybe within even uh, 10 or 15 kilometers uh, from the sea mouth. Where the sea surges are directly the increase of the sea waves or the, the intensity of sea waves, which will uh, uh, go beyond one or two meters and it will cross the beaches and directly flood the coastal houses. So, and the other one, the sea, um, uh, sea flood, uh, or maybe you can, no, no, the river flood, uh, that may be due to different uh, reasons that uh, may be due to heavy rain, maybe due to release of dams. And uh, uh, Dr. Luba, you have to think when you say about storing all these waters in the reservoirs, it's a huge water bomb. We need space. If you have a huge rainfall, if there is no space to store that, there'll be huge flood downstream and there's even chance to uh, the, uh, the uh, destruction of that particular dam and a dam break is going to change everything. So we have to be careful about when we say we have to store every time full 100%. I am just basically uh, challenging the government not to store this much of water because it's going to be a problem. You are coming from a, a drought hit areas. I know. May, may I just clarify here? Okay, can I can I just okay can I just intervene and say uh, yeah my, no just one one line clarification okay yeah quickly Lubna yeah. Well, uh, Madhuji, it is uh, not about uh, wanting to store the entire rain. The point here was that acres and acres, more than one third of the river wire is actually encroached. There is an original capacity of the river wire which can store, and it is not being erected, no maintenance is done, the regulations are not removed, huge water land stretches there inside the river. I was telling the government to remove them. And then there are the gates that can be opened and the water can be flown out. But here, without removing all these one third of the reservoir encroachments, they are letting out the pure basic water. This is what I told. I hope I have clarified myself. Yeah, I think you should also look at uh, the reservoirs in a river base in an integrated manner. So when you look at uh, the present condition of reservoirs in, in, in Kaveri and in Krishna Basin, there's a huge possibilities as this year during the Northeast Monsoon. I spoke about Usman Sagar and Himalaya Sagar reservoirs. Monsoon, there's a, this Monsoon, yeah, Northeast okay, Monsoon. Can we avoid one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, because we are really losing out on time. Actually, we have overshot the session by, I think, half an hour. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Madhu, what were your last remarks uh, in two sentences, just two sentences? So, so uh, the, the major issue that we are facing uh, today is the, the incapacity of the departments and the scientific, even the, the engineering community to look at things in a, in a broader understanding and look at rivers uh, as a living systems, not as just waters. We are seeing uh, what um, the rivers and other, other, other water bodies are just uh, for our needs to store water for our drinking purpose, uh, for producing power or maybe for irrigation. But beyond that, it's a living system. If there is a problem to that system, it's going to affect all of us. And, and uh, the changes in climate is going to be more and more. And uh, that is going to change the hydrological cycle. And it, it is intensifying. The hydrological cycle is intensifying. So this is going to, to be a major issue in the future floods and droughts. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's going to be a catastrophe. And we are going to face that. That's all. Over to you, Hussein, uh, for for patiently waiting and and in your uh, your last concluding remarks. Yeah, no, no, I don't have too much to say. I think we've uh, overshot the time, so I'll just be very brief. There was one question uh, which we missed, which was about uh, horizontal cities versus vertical cities. Um, I think um, I mean I don't think that person is there anymore. But the point is that you know this uh, tendency to have uh, formulaic. Uh, and uh, also more deterministic uh, kind of um, uh, approaches is uh, something that we should be wary of. Uh, you know, this particular technology will fix the problem or this kind of urbanization will fix the problem. These are complex social uh, physical phenomenon. They are not about vertical cities or horizontal cities. You can have a horizontal city like Los Angeles, which is uh, an environmental disaster. 
you can also have a vertical city which is more sustainable so it doesn't really have to do with the nature of urbanization it's about what you do in the city uh, as it uh, is uh, and finally just to respond to madhu's uh, question thing about the precautionary principle uh, the precautionary principle madhu I, I'm, I'm sure you know this it's not so much about the project proponents making reports we know how they how what kind of reports they make they are scientifically completely flawed anti scientific often um, and uh, the the point of precautionary principle is to respect the science it's to say that you know the burden on the it's the question of evidence not of um, the report itself and the fact that uh, the um, there should be near scientific certainty of the absence of harm, uh, which right now nobody does. Right now, what they say is, yeah, these are the problems, but we'll mitigate them. You know, so unless there is near scientific certainty of the, of the absence of harm, projects should not be allowed to be taken forward. That's uh, basically what was being said. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you, Hussein. Uh, Lubna, uh, do you want to uh, say something as a concluding remark quickly? Yeah, thanks again, uh, Priya. Uh, all that I want to tell is that uh, the, we must uh, go by the constitution. Everybody should feel the inner responsibility laid by our constitution, both the state and also the citizens. And I would definitely tell for the result of all the efforts that NFM and so many participants are putting here, I would say that every citizen should take up the water body in their vicinity and ensure on the solid waste management rules. We, each one of us had some responsibility that our waste of coming out of us out of our usage should not be the responsibility of anybody so how the government should also proceed towards that and that's the main uh, crux of the point i want to put here thank you yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so much lubna so that brings us to the end of this conversation uh bahut hi engaging raha ye pura session uh thank you very much to all the speakers professor janakarajan madhu sudan uh hussein and lubna uh, for uh, for all your presentations, very very insightful discussions. Jo aaj huye pichle dhai ghante se jo humne baat kari isme urban floods ko lekar ke bahut saari chize nikal ke aayi ki kis tarah climate change ka jo mudda hai, wo kis tarah se juda hua hai urban floods se, kis tarah se planning, governance, human interventions, natural jo hai drainage uske barbad hona, kis tarah se hamare constitutional rights hi nahi duties ki bhi baat ki gayi yaha pe decentralized solutions ki baat ki gayi to ye sara jo hai kahin na kahin is cheez pe humko matlab point karta hai we are being pointed towards the fact that definitely the whole issue needs to be approached holistically in an integrated manner um, uh, scientifically as well as when we are talking about planning and um, uh, governance at the, at, the, at the city level. So uh, uh, this requires basically various stakeholders to come together and look at this issue, not as something that is purely developmental, but something that is totally, totally rooted in ecology uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and to resolve it with, uh, with that uh, you know, think keeping maybe you know uh, topography, land, uh, you know land patterns, and 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 water, um, you know, close and all of this in, in at the center of it. You know, scientifically at the center of it. So, so is pure cheese ko yahan pe khatam karte hain. Bahut lively discussion raha hai. I will uh, basically sign off. Um, uh, we will join next year, next um, uh, Sunday again for another discussion uh, on the 84th, uh, you know, uh, episode of uh, this Grounded Voices series. We will come back to you with another interesting topic and a bunch of, um, uh, you know, experts um, and um, karikartas from the field who have been working on many issues, uh, whether it's social, environmental, um, communal, anti-communal, uh, and, uh, you know, gender sensitive issues. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to seeing you all next Sunday uh, again at uh, six o'clock. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we also had a very engaging audience, Smita, everybody basically, uh, very engaged audience as well. I'd like to thank all of you for, for, for being with us uh, and the speakers. Thank you so much. Bahut, bahut Thank you, Priya. And Zamini Awaze, Agli Hapta Fira Enge Satme Hamsab, or Arunjati Ji Kuch Agle Sasaki. Please. I cannot just share the topic. Agle, uh, we are looking into the uh, 
you know, we all are saying the collapse uh, of the federal structure of all the constitutional institutions, whether they are in a form of uh, election commission, the minority commission, national commission, women. So we did that. Uh, we uh, 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 last हम हर संडे के हर महीने के लास्ट संडे को ट्रांसपेरेंसी और अकाउंटेबिलिटी को ऊपर फोकस करते हैं हमने गए महीने के लास्ट संडे आल्सो वी हैड डन दैट एंड वी लुक्ड इनटू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ नेशनल आई मीन द कमीशन ऑफ एससीएसटी एंड नेशनल कमीशन ऑफ वुमेन एंड वेरियस अदर कमीशन दिस संडे आल्सो वी विल बी लुकिंग इनटू द होल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड देयर अकाउंटेबिलिटी and what is happening with them so whether in terms of a national commission of minorities and other issues so do join us next sunday at 6 pm and please do visit our uh, site where you'll see all the branded badges series we also run a series called you are so what specifically for youth uh, that's on sunday a uh, saturday also at the same time 6 o'clock please do join us and thank you for joining and priya and hussein dubna madhu thanks a lot for being for such a insightful um, presentation thank you jinda जिंदाबाद साथियों